save the domed ceiling of polished crystal. It is made to reflect everything in the room in distorted ways, concentrating light upon the center of the large oval pool of water in the center of the chamber. The whole place seems to be lit with a blue-green light from this pool, and at the same time the pool seems to absorb light, capturing it in its heart. Pale green flames come from eight bronze crescents, four on the east wall, four on the west. The flames shed light, but the room is still cold. Tapestries of the vilest sort cover the east and west sections of the north wall. The south wall shows a mosaic of some great ten-armed octoploid monster, holding a sacrificial victim in each tentacle. The monster is fashioned from dark purple tiles, with reddish highlights and green orbs. So currently you guys are basically standing at the north end of this room where the double doors are. You know, and that's what you see looking south. So what do you guys do? Hmm. Well, I guess we just got to keep going deeper into this place, right? Yeah, that's what I believe we have to do. All right. Do we think we're done here? Hey, we've cleared this room, haven't we? We. This is. No, you've just entered it. Huh? Okay. Okay. Well, do we want to do anything in here, or do we want to try to go deeper? I mean, this seems like a dead end here from looking at the map. What's up with that pool in the center? It both seems to emit and absorb light. It's an oval, 10 feet across, 20 feet long. <laughs> so it... Okay. Um, does the liquid look particularly not water? You look, walking up to it to get a better look, or you just yes, yes, I am. Yes, sure. I am. All right. Yeah. So you can see that it, that this water is in a basin of small lapis lazuli tiles, and the crystal clear water allows vision to the very bottom of the basin. The edge depth, the, that is the depth near the edge, appears to be four feet. And you can see that it s slopes steeply to the middle, perhaps 12 feet deep, where some sort of humanoid is chained. chained. And as it sees you, the edge of the pool, it looks into your eyes, and you hear a telepathic message saying that, Help! You gotta get me out of here! They're gonna sacrifice me to the Kraken! It's quickly! I call over the smarter characters. Well, Gilbert, anyway. Gilbert, are you here? Gilbert? Goulash? I'm here. Okay. I was going to say, oh my god, i got to carry everything by myself. <laughs> you are all alone. So, you heard about... Okay, I'm going to tell you about the guy that's trapped. Is he in the pool? Yes, he seems to be chained at the bottom of this pool. <laughs> hmm. I remember, I think... I got, like, possessed by a trident around here, so I think there may be evil at work in this place. There's a guy screaming for help down at the bottom of this pool. 
Does that make sense, though? How was he screaming from the bottom of a pool? Telepathically! It's some kind of magic shit. Yeah, see, I don't know if I'd buy it. I mean, he is a triton, so he technically can breathe underwater, oh, so... He is. Oh. Well, I'm assuming. He is a triton, yes. Hey, you guys hear in your minds, you got to get me out of here. It's going to eat me. Uh-huh. Something is going to eat him, he says. So do we help him or no? Lively crowd tonight. I know, right? Mm. Well, I don't know. I don't like it. Okay, so so we're not going to get him out from down in there? We're just going to leave him down there? Or what? I mean, I, I think we should just be on our way. Uh, I guess we could be on our way then. All right, well, as you guys turn to leave, you hear a voice in your mind still. No, don't leave me. Don't worry, we'll come back. So where, where, where are we going? Deeper into the fortress? Yeah, deeper into the fortress. All right. So yeah, you head north. I'm presuming. Sure. Yeah. All right. That leads you into that green room, forty by ninety feet, arched ceiling, fountain in the west wall, open pair of brass doors to the north, leading to an angled hallway that's painted, closed brass doors to the east. That, you know, leads to the uh, colored hallway. All right. Uh, well, we've already been here. I think... Um... Mm -hmm. There was a certain uh, entity here that got banished. Right. I think we already we already did, like, a sort of magic -y thing here. I think we can probably go back out and try to, like, go back to the sort of three-way hallway and try to go further in. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. I agree. So we're going to go back. We're going to forget about the man in the pool and leave. And go yeah, back. He's probably. He'd be all right, yeah. He's a triton. They're going to feed him to the crack and he'd be all right. All right. So which way are you headed? It's just the two of us, we can't possibly defeat any kind of monster. So, yeah. Okay. okay, but that doesn't tell me which way you're going. I'm not exactly sure. We're trying to find a way down. Is there a direction we haven't been? Out of this room? No. How far back, how many rooms back do we have to travel to get to a direction we haven't went? One. Okay, well, let's go back that one and go back a different direction. Yeah, let's go that way. All right, so you head north along the angled painted corridor, depicting scenes of 
evil, death, and destruction, and worshippers following a robed cleric. All of evil. This eventually leads you to another hallway heading north. To the east is the octagonal room. The north, the hallway, goes as far as your dark vision can see, but you can see at the end of the hallway that it looks to open up into a avenue that you haven't been before. Okay. Should we go the way we haven't seen yet? Sure, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> so you walk forward into this huge echoing hall that was evidently once the scene of great revels celebrating the triumphs of the temple. The floor is littered with skeletons, skulls, and bones of various humanoids. Here and there, parts of broken chairs, stools, tables, benches, sideboards, buffets, cabinets, and cases lay mangled on the ground. Much of the wreckage uh, seems to have been carted off for firewood. Tapestries and trophies remain on the walls and spots, the former showing scenes of raiding, looting, pillaging, and raping. Trophies include mummified heads, torn battle standards, hides and skins, battered shields, sundered armors, and broken swords. Dozens of empty cressets and sconces line the walls. The broad steps in the middle of the north wall are of dull black stone, and the descending stair stairway seems most depressing and horrible, though passable. Also, though the description doesn't note it, uh, across from you is another set of hallways, as well as to the west. So, more doors. Um, yeah. Which one do you want to take? Uh, what are our options? Do we have three? Or... Yeah, I wanted to say the one at the north, the one at the west, and the east, or something like that, didn't yeah, you say? north has been a good direction. We could keep going that way. Ain't that what you said, Under? Or is that Hold on. Because <laughs> I got a map for you. Because remember, there's also a staircase going down. Staircase going down sounds like where we need to go. Oh, yeah, you're right. That does sound like where we need to go. Let's go down. Yeah, let's go down. All right. So you walk over to the staircase. You can also see the other side of that other northerly painted hallway. Hold on, I just want to update the map so we have everything covered. Yeah, and a stairway that descends. And so you guys want to go down the stairwell? Yes. Yeah, let's go. All right. Stand by Y. Load the map. All right, yeah, so as you descend the uh, staircase, a pair of doors 
comes into view. Hanging loosely on their hinges, the large bronze doors look to have been rent as if by great force. A large, darkened room visible beyond. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. Two doors, eh? Well, it's a pair of doors that have that you can see have been rent asunder, and you can see through the opening that there is a large room beyond. Oh, you cool. would have to push the doors open more to actually get in. Yeah, I'd like to investigate this door. Yes. How, how did it seem to be rent asunder? Okay, make an investigation check. I give you it guidance. Wait, do I have guidance? I believe I have guidance. I give you guidance. You need all the help you can get. All right, Arturis. Yes, it looks like that there were runes of a protective nature on this door, and that great magic had been worked against them to over to just overpower and destroy the magic involved, which of course warped and badly rent the bronze doors as they are. All right. So yeah, you guys are standing at the bottom of these stairs looking at these doors. I'd like to push them open. Excellent! Make a strength athletics check as these are heavy, heavy doors. I would like to help him push these sure. doors open. You know, Beta is no slouch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, Gulag puts his hands on the door and starts heaving. The doors, with a grinding sound against the stonework, you know, slowly slide open. And then they seem to get stuck, and Gulag just kind of seems to redouble his efforts. And you guys hear a loud popping sound as the hinges give way, and the doors fall inward. Oh crap! A loud Ow, bang. <laughs> Echoing through the room. Which you can now see. And see that the stonework in this room seems leprous and, mol and molted. Everywhere are sculpted fungus shapes of nightmare form and coloration. Several columns rise to the ceiling above which writhes and squirms with intertwined fungi. The walls drip with slimes and oozes. The bizarre reds, disgusting yellows, rotten grays and browns, and nauseous greens, and hideous blues blend in a vertiginous swirl in the center of the northern part of the place, wherein squats a huge, sprawling purple throne. This great chair is sculpted to display fungi and human forms, but those depicted are shown crying out in pain as fungi shoot up through their flesh, feeding upon their dead and decomposing bodies. Some show it growing rampant in their bony remains. Even the shape of the throne is abominable. Its seat is broad and round with concave surface and four hemispherical indentations. It has, four, it has wide armrests but no back whatsoever. It stands upon a four-tiered dais, the top and the top and 
two-foot-high steps of which are carved in bas-relief to depict fungi, smut, slimes, molds, jellies, and other horrible gross, devouring a compacted mass of living and dead humans. I'm sorry, did you say smut? I did. There's porn? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's not what I was expecting. It Look, look, they're being, they're being devoured in a... some. Some of the scenes depict it in a like semi-erotic fashion. Oh, there's vor. Yes. Great. I uh, don't worry about it. How big is the statue? It's a throne. throne. It's a ten it is a ten foot wide throne. Projections resembling blighted vegetation line the walls, and each gives off a dim but pervasive illumination. Passages and doors are in the east and south walls. Twin valves of bronze in the middle of the south wall accompany tw- twins of gates found elsewhere in the dungeon, complete with bindings and silvery glowing runes. Huh. Their description is wrong. There are no silvery glowing runes. They don't glow anymore. To the west, a broad 20-foot flight of serpentine steps leads down, leads downward. Why don't they glow anymore? Well, you can see the chains look to have, you know, run in the direction towards these doors. Whatever broke the doors broke the runes. Oh, oh, there's some kind of ceiling thing. There's something bad here. We need to get the hell up out of this place quickly. Ritual cast detect magic. I think we should go further down. I mean, we have to get down Wait, to... before you advance, let me get Detect Magic up. Alright, you cast Detect Magic. The whole of this area seems to be glowing with faint hues of abjuration magic. Alright. There's abjuration afoot. We should step cautiously. What, you want to step on cautiously down these stairs? Yes, let's go. Yeah. All right. You approach the stairs. You can see it goes down about 20 feet. and descends into a hall, which broadens to a 40-foot width. The floor here is serpentine stone. The walls are of black marble, veined with green and purple. Runes of glowing gray and inky black mark the walls with glyphs that seem to run and shift into other forms when not viewed directly. Beyond you can see three pillars, or sorry, pedestals, 20 feet to the west. Each is 12 feet tall and about 30 inches in diameter, topped with a metal skull seemingly cast as part of the pillar. Each likewise bears strange signs and sigils that shift and change to be unreadable. The southern pillar is electrum, the center gold, the north platinum. Beyond about 30 feet, from the pillars, the hall broadens to the width of 60 feet, and a huge dais of translucent alabaster commands the west end of the place. Before this stepped platform is a magical device set into the floor, a hexagon whose two interlocking equilateral triangles and the circle that rings them seem to be made of molten electrum. It 
Tips protruding from the sides of the central hexagon glow different colors, clockwise from the north, being red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and indigo. The center of the device pulses a pure purple light. Damn. That was a hell of an explanation. So, yeah, yeah. all right, smart guy. Can you make anything out of this? Can I? You're the smart guy. Figure it out. Right. That's that's what I'm asking. Under, can I uh, investigate this? Well, what what are you trying to investigate? It's a very broad question. Let's go with Arcana. Actually, yes, but what is, are I'm you trying, trying to... to determine? Sorry, uh, what under? What are you trying to determine? I am trying to determine what kind of magical uh, tomfoolery is going on with the strange device. Okay, making our kind of check. Can I get guidance? Yes, of course, always. All right. So that appears to be some type of magical seal. Oh, well, good thing we brought clubs. Hey, we even have a magic club. It's perfect. Yeah. All right, well, we kept going down, and this is the lowest point we could get to. Right, and just so, just so you guys know, you're still standing over by where the doors are. I just, you know, drew the whole thing. Yeah. So there's a pentagram and a multicolored altar and three columns. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You can see, you know, in the you know kind of glowing light from those flames that atop the dais at, to the west is a huge throne of silver, and you can see it adorned with hundreds of precious gems. Though they are set to form leering demon faces, skulls, fungi, and other like patterns. You can oh, yeah. see that the gems appear to be of all colors, sizes, and shapes. Behind the seat is a huge tapestry of deep purple, worked in red, green, ochre, and white to show various fungi. So what do you guys do? Well, I know what we don't do, which is uh, we definitely don't try to pry the gems out of that throne. We all know, or Beta, you and I know how well that went last time. Look, I'm just saying. <sighs> just saying. So we've got that, You're that just tapestry of blue purple. I thought you were a cyborg. Perhaps an android? He's just saying. <laughs> okay, Dragon, Dragon Ball joke aside. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some kind of magic going on here. Uh, and Arcturus, you weren't able to figure out what this is for? No, no, it's uh, some kind of seal. Oh. Hmm. Well... I don't know if we want to unseal this. It's probably sealing away something evil. Uh, 
That's what my thoughts were. Yeah. 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 Then you guys hear a voice in your head. Oh, God. Here we go again. All three of you hear the same voice simultaneously. Oh, it's much, much too late to worry about that. Crap baskets. As you see a figure emerge from behind the tapestry and stepping forward to stand in front of the throne. I start blasting! Oh my god. Looks like that. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, no, I agree, no. Oh! I start blasting! Man. Find me in the Alps! Alright, uh, roll initiative then. Is that bad? Should I have not started blasting? Oh, crap, baskets. I mean... Should I have waited? What y'all think? No, I, I think you were in the right this time. I was in the right the last time. And hey, finally we got something that grosses me out instead of Gilbert. <laughs> no, my, my thing is... Fun guy lady. Like that, that thing on top of its, uh, its headdress or whatever the hell that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Mushrooms? Yeah, I'm not grossed out by this, but like that kind of mushroom in real life, it makes my skin crawl. Yeah, I don't know why. It's like a Final Fantasy boss with like three bosses stacked on top of each other. No, this isn't even a Final Fantasy boss. It's three bosses in a trench coat. Like a Dark Souls boss. See, I kind of get that, Pete, except my skin doesn't crawl. I just have this like compulsion to like step on it. Yeah, no, see, that would be worse, because see, things like that, that releases release spores. Because then it releases spores. Okay, I got a question. I got a question, Andrew, before you start killing us. I got a question. Yeah, sure. Was she going to attack us? Because in initiative, she would go first. So if she doesn't know we're attacking, then, you know. You make hostile gestures, and th- and hence initiative. Like, like there, there are somatic components to Eldritch Blast, are there not? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else. There are. Well, I mean, there's somatic components. Somatic, somatic components does require some visual movement. Visual and somatic, yeah. Verbal and somatic, yeah. I start chanting. All right. Yeah. Well, she okay. is going to spend her turn moving sixty feet closer to you guys. Before she away from us. Uh, well, so you were at the pillar, so it'd be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 66. She was 65 feet from you guys. Oh, well, that's five feet from us? So she's just going to walk right, she's going to go around the seal and walk till she is 10 feet, like, right in front of you guys. That's an interesting bit of information. We'll have to hold on to that. And then it's Goulash's turn. All right. How far did that put her away from us? 10 feet. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll play that game. I will rage and then move into melee. Okay. And let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go with the usual. So I'm going to make my three claw attacks. Okay. I'll roll to hit. I will, but first I'm going to try to push her over. Okay. This is contested athletics, right? Uh, my athletics versus her athletics. Right she athletics. is a large creature. Ah, okay. That's important. Yeah. Not that it matters. It matters for her because she does a good advantage on the ability check. Oh yeah, matters for her. Hey, I rolled well though. You did, and she falls over. She's now All prone. Right. Hey, free advantage time. Three. 
three hits. All right, 3d6, uh, yeah, 29 magical slashing. All right, yeah, you just rip into her. Her body does not seem to bleed, but rather seems to be made as if out of a solid mushroom. Mm, yeah, I kind of figured that. There are, like, spores flying everywhere. In the uh, the yeah. high fae. Yeah, you, like, you slash into it, and there's, like, this dusty, like, essence kind of pooling out now a little bit around where your claws had gone in. Uh, great. All right, uh, let's have her make a wisdom save as well. Okay. Oh, it just barely failed. And, you know, since she apparently had to run into melee, let's have her make a... Or, no, wait a minute, I can't make her do that to herself. Fuck. Uh, yep, then just the... Just what? I gotta look up the... Uh, oh, there it is. Just 17 psychic damage. Okay. And that's it. All right, Beta. <laughs> she's prone, right? So she's. Yes. I'd have disadvantage to blast her. Uh, yes. How big is the room? Uh, at this section, it is 40 feet wide. How tall? How tall? It's 30 feet tall. 30 feet tall. Beta's going to cast Fly on herself and fly up to the ceiling of this of this building. Okay. Then I am going to Action Surge and blast the bitch from, from the air. Alright. You start blasting. Roll to hit. Ooh, I like that. I mean, would I still have disadvantage because now I have Line of Sight. It's like she's standing uh, up. No, I'm going to I'm gonna say it's, you know, the you know, being at height, shooting at a prone person, that, that's that's fine. Normal attacks. All right. It's all a matter of perspective. Man, that's like the fifth team fucking reference we've made the, we've made tonight. Wait, what was? At this rate, I wonder how long it's going to be until we start quoting entire episodes. That wasn't supposed to be a joke. I don't it's know if I, if I accidentally made a reference. It's all a matter of perspective, really. Oh, yeah. That, that is a, that's also just a thing people say, though. I don't know all if right. that counts. One hit. No, just one damn. When it comes from one of the three of us interacting with one of the other of the three of us, <laughs> it's a reference. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's funny, before I said that, I was considering making a high ground joke, but I was like, nah, I'm above that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anything else, Beta? Uh, no. Beta is going to safely be above everything so she can look down and observe the battlefield. Great. At the end of your turn, she is going to take a legendary action. I love these. And is going to attack Goulash with a pseudopod. Uh oh. Oh, she's a slime. Somehow. Does a no. 15 hit you? Okay. And Arturus. Distance? 10 feet. All right. I call forth Ball Bearing Swarm. Okay. You would have disadvantage on them because they're ranged attacks, wouldn't you? No, no, they're no, they're melee attacks. They're, oh, they're melee. It's ten individual creatures making melee attacks. Oh god! <laughs> that is so bad. Dear God, she was punctured by shrapnel. Yeah, Arcturus using illegal cluster munitions. All right. Ah, uh, that is four, eight hits. One of which is a crit.
All righty, yeah, you shotgun into her, spores being kicked up all around her, creating this hazy look on her. Mm. You know, to the point where she looks like she's vaping. Under? Yes. Is there any chance that Arcturus might know what this is? Arcturus could make an Arcana check. You know, given the seals, given the other stuff you've seen, you're pretty sure that this is a demon. A very powerful demon. A demon that you know the name of. This is Zug to me. Well, it's, who is it to me, then? Hey, guys. Mm -hmm. Fight to win, but right. we might need to run. No, not again. Oh god, what is she? We're gonna pull another teleportation circle. Just kill here. her. Just kill her quick. We're trying. That'll be my turn. Okay, you end your turn. At the end of your turn, she takes another legendary action and begins casting a spell. Counter spell. Her spell fizzles. Her turn. She stands up. She spreads her arms. And uh, on, go ahead. Th this this might sound really stupid. Uh huh. If she stands up, would that mean that the top of her head leaves the area of control of my ball bearings? No. Okay, I had to try. So she spreads her arms, and spores burst out in a cloud. That fills the area around her, and I need. Sorry, I just scroll. Constitution saving throws from all three of you. Come on, guys. Oh, well, I didn't roll very well. All right. Goulash and Beta, please roll a D100. I am going to... Oh, man. No, no, no. Do, do what you're doing. What? I was going to activate Favored by the Gods and add a D4, 2D4 to that. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, you know, Goulash has to roll a D100 because I don't think he's got anything, but you might. Yeah, I don't have anything. Well, I have one thing, but I'm not using it on this. It gives me a 20. All right, so it's just Goulash that has to roll a d100. All right. All right, you got a hundred monster table. Fuck. Mm -hmm. God, this is one of those old school monsters. All right, Goulash, you gain a new flaw. Ooh, I love flaws. Yep. Whatever that seems appropriate. All right, I won't let you know when it comes up. <laughs> that's not good. This thing gives you flop. That's not good. Oh, also you're charmed. Ah, cool. Goulash's resolve is tested. <laughs> All right. Aren't high-level barbarian? Charm don't work on a barbarian, does it? Anyway. Good God, if this right, I'm going to finish this whole family size thing at Cheerios. So, actually, that is a point. Goulash, does, uh, do, does your rage prevent charm? I don't think so. Uh, okay. Check. It, it matters. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Let me see. It depends on what kind of... Uh, no, but if you're there high... Might be, there might be one subclass that gets that, but I don't know what it is. No, I don't get that. Okay. Well, it is now your turn. And I would remind you that charmed creatures cannot attack the charmer or target the charmer with harmful abilities or magical effects. Mm. Well, uh... 
as far as you are concerned, she is an ally. Hmm. Maybe not of the party, but at least of you. All right. Uh, I'm going to bite my, uh, my tongue a little bit to take one point of damage that I then have. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to do nothing. Excellent. I'm going to stare off into the distance. <laughs> All right. At the end of your turn, she takes a legendary okay. action to exert her will over a charmed creature. Oh my god! Goulash, you must use your reaction to move up to your speed and make one melee weapon attack against Arcturus. Ooh, third time's the charm. Here we go. Oh my lord. All right. I you don't want to do this. I will... Actually, you know, here's the thing. I do want to do this. No, you want to half-ass your punch. All right. Well, I only make one attack, and it's not my turn. Correct. This is your reaction in between turns. Yep. You want to half-ass it. Do I want to half-ass it? You want, want to, to half-ass it. Do I want to whole-ass it? Like, am I compelled to whole-ass it? Nope, you are just compelled to move forward and make an attack. Hmm, okay. Uh, can I do anything else along the way? Nope. Oh. Can I stop doing anything else along the way? No. Can he right. trip himself along that's what, the way? That's what I was trying to get, but I don't think I can stop standing up. Alright, well, there's your attack. Does a 19 hit Arcturus? Not if I could shield. That being said, I just finished counterspelling. Indeed. Oh god, my <laughs> wizard parts. There you go. Oh, hey, I rolled max damage. Oh my god! It's only 13, calm down. He's a I, still, I still got my ball bearings. I don't have I don't have my ball bearings, but I still have my ball bearings. Mm -hmm. I don't have my balls or my bearings, but I do have my ball bearings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but it is Beta's turn as you're flying up there. So I can see her standing up. I am going. Hmm. Okay, I am going to blast her! Okay, roll to hit. Oh, it's one hit. She's only five. I'm only shooting one one shot. I'm casting uh 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 fucking the radiant beam. What is bolt. it? Guide, guiding guiding bolt. bolt. Yeah, guiding bolt. I'm firing right. guiding bolt. Well, you have it. A bolt. All right. It's radiant damage. Okay, yeah. She starts glowing as you blow a little bit off of her. More spores kind of flowing out. And then I'm going to move back to the end of the room. To be clear, you're flying deeper into the room? Over her? No, back, back to where we came. Back ah, towards the okay. spores. All right, you fly back a bit. Yeah. All right, at the end of your turn, she will take a legendary action and cast a spell. Uh, she is going to cast Dispel Magic, targeting animate objects. Asshole. <laughs> yeah, she does have to roll, though, because if I recall, animate objects is a fourth level spell. Let me check. I mean, she's got a 
It's a fifth level spell. Excellent. Ooh, that's a high difficulty. It does not fall. Oh, yeah! And it is your turn, Arcturus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... Right. again! Let me double check the spell. Because you have advantage on your next yep. hit. All right. So, bonus action. I tell my little ball bearings to get to work. Okay. Also, what was that about advantage, Beta? You have advantage because I hit it with Guiding Bolt. The first ball bearing has advantage. The rest oh. do not. Yeah, the first ball bearing has advantage. Well, there's the first one. Okay. And the others? Because it's just one hit. Total of three hits. First and... So, out of the ten, three hit. Jesus. What does she have? Like an 18? 17. She's got a 17. No, if she had a 17, that would have been another hit. Oh, oh, yeah, no, no, I see 17 is, yeah, no, I, I see what you mean. She has to have an armor class of 17, because the 16s missed her, but the 17 hit her. So she no, the 17 did not hit her. The two 27s yeah. and the 26 hit. Oh, you were counting the other 26. I thought you were counting in that list. No, no. Of the 10, three hit. She's got an armor class of at least 18. Fuck hell. All right, but she does appear to be bloodied. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Go for broke. I f I I begin casting a spell. Okay, she does not have counter spell. I blast an, a radiant green beam at her deck save. Okay. Well, so uh, what's standing behind her? That seal. What does uh, disintegrate hit? It hits that seal. You know, the one with the pentagram and the fire. The different colors. Crap! What have you done? So, um... How nervously should I be chewing my Cheerios? Well, it depends. Do you think all of the fire simultaneously going out is a bad thing? This is a very bad thing! Can I insight check? Sure! How is Bitch responding to this? She looks behind her. She looks at her Taurus. She gives this hideous smile. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, fucking hell. Arturus, it's not a friendly smile. You you think you done goofed. In for a P, in for a pound, let's do this! A anything else in your turn, Arturus? Nope. Great. At the end of your turn, she's going to take a legendary action. And going to instruct Goulash to finish you off. So Goulash, you have to cool. make one weapon attack against him. He's not prone or anything, is he? Nope. Alright. Wait, finish him off? Is he almost dead? I don't think he's been hit yet. Yeah, that's an interesting choice of words. I don't think I can finish him off. <laughs> Does an 18 hit Arturus? I, I don't think that's the kind of finishing she meant. 
Uh, oh, right. Galosh gets down on both of his no. Oh, God, no. I allow it to hit. Okay. Why? He's saving his reaction. Just in case, yeah. Fucking what? Alright, 11 more. And a concentration check. It's still up. So our turn, she's going to whip a pseudopod at you on her turn. From 10 she's feet away. She's dumb and misses because she's a stupid musher. Okay. Oh my good guy! He has a plus 13. That bitch can hit you rolling on a two. So 15 what? bludgeoning damage and 8 poison damage. And then I uh, need a concentration check. Alright, it stays up. So she does it again. Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> Total of 24 bludgeoning and poison. Oh my god! Come at me, bitch. So she gives you a third attack. She's got another attack? Oh my, oh my god! Oh my god. For 24 <laughs> bludgeoning and poison damage. Bitch, you gotta be dead. There's no way you're still alive. So, is our turret still concentrating? Give me a second, I have to do math. God damn it! Fuck! Hey, you still up? I, I never yes. said that. I, had, I said I had to do math. One second. Ah. I, I mean, yeah, if you say I'm up, I'm up. <laughs> no, no, I just assumed you, have, that you were making concentration uh, check instead of just being down. Oh, well, he is still up if he's having to make concentration rolls. Right, that's what I thought he was doing, but uh, I couldn't or, or maybe he just hasn't figured out how much health he has left yet. Yeah, I, I, I was having to add stuff up. Sure. I didn't hear no bells. Excellent. Yeah, and your I, stuff stays I up. I swear to God, it's like the more she she whips me, the higher my save is. You, you like the whipping. The six in your face as she's beating. Flagellation focuses the mind. Mm. Okay. Uh, that's it for her. It is Goulash's turn. You are still cool. charmed. I don't get to make a save on my turn or anything like that. Uh, do, 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 You get a save at, at uh, after 24 hours. Oh, lovely. All right. Uh, hmm. Let's see, is there anything productive I can do? I can still help my friends. Uh, let's see, do I have anything useful on me? No, not really. I'm going to do nothing. Okay. At the end of your turn, she begins casting a spell. I gotta get up. Reaction! You're going to have to roll it, because this is a higher than third level spell. Okay. Here's, here's my question. Is it higher than seven? You don't know, unless you're using your reaction to identify the spell. No, I, I mean, I, I'm reaction counterspelling with a 7th level slot. <laughs> ah, okay. That's important information. Her spell fizzles. And it is Beta's turn. Okay. Beta's got some strategies in mind. First thing Beta's gonna do... Mm, Yeah. 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 
<clears throat> Vader's gonna blast this bitch. Okay, roll to hit. Another guiding bolt. Yeah. That hits. I think that's 18 points of radiant damage. It is, and she's glowing faintly inside this cloud of spores. Okay, and can I see Arcturus? Yes. All right, I'm back. As a bonus action, I am going to heal Arcturus. Okay. For 20. Alrighty. Anything else in your turn? Uh, no, I'm done. Alright, at the end of your turn, she's going to use a legendary action to cast a spell. And she's going to attempt to dispel these goddamn uh, animated objects. I do believe the ball bearings fall to the floor. Probably. Pretty sure they do. All right, Arcturus, it is your turn. So she's bloody. Yes. Leaking spores everywhere. I'm crippled. You did see Gulag's that beta healed you for 20, right? Oh, yeah, I, I can okay. see. I'm, I'm still functionally crippled. Like, I'm in melee with this bitch. So you know what, Under? Uh-huh. I'm going to attempt to reach into the flow and pull upon powers beyond my capacity to God control. Damn it. I will try to twist space and time to my will. Again? Okay. Right. Well, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, you will need, I think we said you need to make a certain check. Do That is an arcana check to do this. I swear to God, that's what I got last time. Yeah. And now I need an int save. <laughs> this is not good. That's better than last time. That is significantly better than last time. As the spell fizzles unsuccessful. You failed to cast it. But there's no side effect of, like, slinging you through space and time again. Because you passed oh, your save. Well, fuck. I mean, I suppose you could try to, you know, voluntarily fail the and save and yes. come up. Okay, roll a d6. Oh, man. No. Oh, Three. God. Three. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, God. Hold on, I need to roll some dice about this. All right, I just, I just want to just giving up on any chances of ever getting home. Um, yeah, yeah, except that that's, the spell affects a random location within the spell's range instead of the caster's target. Oh, oh, tell me I teleport this bitch somewhere. <laughs> she disappears. Yes! <laughs> Did you just cast banishment without casting banishment? That was like super banishment. You guys are out of initiative. He didn't cast banishment, he casted retcon. <laughs> she's Long not ago she's not in a distant of land, anymore. a foolish demon lord stepped forth to oppose me. 
But before the final blow was struck, I threw open a portal in time, flinging her into the future. Yeah, you know what? When we come back to uh, our time, she may be there waiting on us. How do you know you didn't send her to the past? She's about to walk through that door, but with, like, superpowers. It's true. Know where we are. And when we are. Guys, let's just take the victory. Mm-hmm. I gotta, I must be making really good characters, because every time we get into a really important combat, Under has to disable me. So, uh, first off, I need our tourists to make a D100 roll, real quick. Oh, yeah, of course. So we need to find out where he actually sent the bitch. <laughs> Turns out I get the same roll as last time she appears like five feet to the left. You sent her to Greyhawk. Hey! Okay. I mean, that was pretty close. That is pretty close. We oh, no, you, you sent her to FFAM. Um... I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's on his table. Look, Funny look, enough, if, neither does Gilbert. <laughs> look, if we send her to FFAM, there's there's no problem. I I, I will I will give you a hint. Seven is not FFAM. Yeah, I, I kind of figured it would be like she would have established setting. She'd either bow down to the queen that runs the place, or have the Death Knight Gilbert or a visit. Or both. Or both, yeah. All right. But yeah, you guys are out of initiative. I what love this. You know. Well, that was interesting. Jesus Christ, Hunter, you like really scaring the shit out of me, don't you? I gotta say, I don't know if this was called for in this situation. That was a demon. Like so, a powerful demon lord. Eh, I think we could have made it. it. She wasn't even at full power. She was bloody. Yes, she was. If I hadn't somehow managed to fail my con save, despite having 20 con... Yeah, you were the last person I expected to fail that. Oh well, I, I totally nice. expected me to turn two spellcasters against you. And be yeah. used trying to solo this person. Eh, that would have been fine. I could handle it. I mean, what are they going to do? Hit me with AoEs that I can ignore? No, I actually, the only thing she could have done was order them to walk up and smack you. Oh, yeah, that would have been even easier. Ugh. Arcturus, you stick attack. Eh. Yeah, it's a good thing you broke the seal, though, before he tried to do that. Oh, yeah, speaking of the seal, that's like the big pentagram in the middle of the room. Wait, wait, uh-huh. it's a good thing he broke the seal before trying to do that? Yeah, because the seal is what was imprisoning her here. So if you tried to force her out of the prison while the seal was still intact, you would have been going up against that seal. It would have been a lot harder on you. Mission failed successfully. <laughs> yeah, we can have we- the seal. We brought clubs. I mean, we unleashed a horror onto the world, but hey. A world. Not necessarily this world. It's true. Can we, because it's Hopefully never going to matter. Can we get, like, one hint about where she went? No. Okay. It's gonna matter. Because it does matter. Oh. It's that's interesting. Matter. He rolled real bad on the D100 again. Oh. I think I just moved her over a little bit. No, he sent her to, uh... He sent her to beginnings of our world. When we get back, everything's gonna be different. Um... I mean, if you want me to get really meta about this, I rolled a three last time. There's not that many D&D settings, so they're probably on tens. So, let's see. Blackmore, Greyhawk, Mistra, 
uh, Forgotten Realms, Dark Sun, Plain Sh- Planescape, um, Star uh, the Star One, Spelljammer, Spelljammer, e- Eberron, Ravnica, Rav- you know, technical the magic setting. I was called that. The Blind Eternities is technically the name of it. Um, uh, all the different realms. I'm probably is. missing some. Uh, Dragonlance. Oh uh, yeah, Dragonlance. So yeah, there's right about ten. Midgard, um, the Blighted areas, the Blighted lands. There's like twenty. Yeah, there's a bunch. Twenty-seven <laughs> according say, to Wikipedia. If I sit to Midgard, I'm not really sure there's a concern. That place sucks to live in already. <laughs> Look, look, the Western she comic got turned into Cthulhu's playground. Jump. Like, yeah, I don't know. How do you think that happened? Fun. Because some idiot accidentally, you know, accidentally a demon lord there. T- turns out, turns out, this is before most of the other settings existed, so now I'm responsible for, like, unleashing evil on the rest of the cosmos. Man, I'm, I'm looking at, like, the Wikipedia article for all the D&D settings. I did not know there were this many. How many? There's a lot. Including a whole bunch of that I've just never heard of. Yeah, well, you also have to remember that, you know, technically, like, in this group, we have made four of our, four settings among everyone here. Apparently Diablo is considered an official... Uh, oh, that's game. weird. That, and that's just really? the ones I know of. Yeah, I've Wait, made we... two. Gilbert's made one. Mister's made one. Wait, of uh, official settings? No, yeah, not I mean, official, but I'm just talking D&D settings. No. Like, it's not that hard to make more. <laughs> To, get them, to make them official, yeah, that's a bit trickier. Um, but to make them, not so much. Anyway, so yeah, you guys are standing in this now dark room. I mean, if you want to count those, you can count the one I made that you've been to all of twice. Yeah, we could. Which I, was like, which I didn't develop anything for. Anyway, oh, we've shit. gotten a bit off topic. Um, yeah. So. So what the hell do we do now? I don't know. So what is this big thing in the center of the room here, uh, Brains? What 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 is exactly did you shoot and made her smile and what the hell's going on here? Well, uh based on what I could deduce, that pentagram was some kind of uh, means of imprisoning her. As for why she smiled, it's because I accidentally destroyed it. I would go so far as to surmise that the reason I was able to, you know, throw her through time was because she was no longer bound to this location. So let me let me ask you another. So you did use the same spell that brought us here. Yes, yes. the The attempt was to get us out of here, not send her away. Do you know where you sent her? Underdark, is there any way for Septimus to figure that out? Make an Arcana check, and we'll see. Oh. Guidance? Yeah, of course you can have guidance. You don't know. God, I, 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 love, I love how this time travel bullshit Bangbot will never let me actually roll well. It always keeps you in the dark. I, right. It frustrates me, and I love it. So you haven't figured out multidimensional cosmic string theory yet? Okay. No, not not yet. Um, All right. Give give me time and or two other aspects of elements, and and then I'll I'll know for certain. So in some world somewhere, we have unleashed hell. Uh, the abyss, there's technically. So you know, here's the question I have to uh, posit: Is the abyss a shared uh, existence across all parallel universes? No. The abyss is a franchise. They uh, they have locations in many different settings. What about the far realm? Is that universal across all worlds? Unknown. Mm-hmm. It's the far realms. It's beyond the end of the multiverse, or the end of your multiplanar sphere that makes up each individual setting. So it could. 
if anybody knew the answer to that, they wouldn't be able to tell you. And you well, don't know because well, nobody based never. Based off the positive information, if the if the far realms envelops each setting per se, we would have had to have tra- uh, traveled through the far realm to reach this current location. Okay, what are we doing? No, you. That's not true. Things like teleport don't have you pass through the points in between. Yeah, no, this isn't forty k. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't go through the war from one point to another. Remember, this is this is magic we're talking about here. You simply right. cease to be in one location and then are in another. You do not necessarily have to transit anything in between. All right. Okay, but what are we doing? But yeah, yeah. So you guys are in this dark room now. The well, the we, cold we metallic p- pillars stand there. The broken seal in the middle of the room. The alabaster dies to the uh, west with the silver throne atop it, and the uh, tapestry beyond. I'd like to look behind us. Do I see a friendly face approaching? You do not. Unless you're talking about Tiro's character. Y- yes. Wait, so what? I believe you guys already met him, didn't you? No. No, I'm thinking the wrong, the wrong campaign. My bad. Yeah, you're thinking of the campaign I run. Yeah. So, in that case, I really flubbed this up. Because when when she disappeared, she was replaced by another creature that looked... What character was your character look like? A uh, gnome. By a gnome. The fuck? Uh, a what? So, yeah... Uh, Tyr, what's your character's name? Uh, Azor, the Returned. Azor or Hazor? Azor without, or Hazor without the H. Got it. Right. Spelled in all caps all the time. Of course. Azor! Alright, but yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, Azor, you, you suddenly find yourself in this dungeony looking room some adventurers types obviously in front of you between you and them are three large pedestals 12 feet tall 30 inches in diameter topped with a metal skull each bearing strange signs and signals that shift and change to be unreadable the southern pillar being electrum the center gold and the northern platinum Signs uh, of battle do exist around you. Well, obviously, I've been kidnapped by a cult. So, what do you say? Where am I? Why did you bring me here? Please calm down. Just don't. How much do you want? I want to use persuasion to calm him down. Can I do a do that? Can I persuade you to calm down? Or is that not a thing? I mean, between uh, players, usually you just talk it out. You don't need to yeah, rolls. I mean, okay. Beta is going to be coming. Calm down, please. It's all right. It's okay. Calm down. He's dressed by yeah, like a nun, by the way. With a habit and everything. All right, I I tend to believe a, a person dressed like that. I guess. Uh, so so what happened here, and why am I suddenly in the middle of this battleground? First things first. Where are you from? Because that will help us a lot. Oh shoot! I didn't actually write down where I'm from. Um. Uh, Oh, 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 roll a D100. Roll a D100. Let's have you come from a random plane. No, he's not from a random plane. Aww. Oh. Oh. Okay. So I, I forgot to put the random part in, right? <laughs> no, you didn't. You rolled 100 on a D100. Uh. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the last you knew, hold on, let me pull this up. Now, now I actually got to go to this, because you're from a certain city. 
right? I, I don't have your backstory here, so would you have been from a city? Uh, yeah. All right. From a certain t city called Kledpool. One of the 28 flying cities of the Union of 28. Hey. <laughs> Wait, hang on, I gotta write this down. I don't know that reference. Um, basically, he's, he's from I, I kidnapped him from the past from our home plane. Oh. So you sent the monster to our home plane? No. Well, if I replaced them, then yes. Hey, you don't know if that's how it works. I mean, that is the only logical way it could work. He took one person from one place and swapped them with the demon. No, no, that's not the only way it can work. My tugging on on uh, such arcane powers could have sent them to one place and snagged another person and pulled them over see, here. They don't see, necessarily need to switch. That smart. She's only have a, I only have an intelligence of 10, so Betty is not that smart. But logically speaking... If you move one person from one place to another, you'd have to have something to replace it. You know, no, like maybe, maybe there were three people who were moved. Yeah, we don't have the uh, we don't have the way to observe. Oh it until God, we're gonna get home. We sent her somewhere. Someone from there ended up where he came from, and then he ended up. Here. They have taken over one of the floating islands, and look, look, look. Do you want me to try this again? I'll try it again. No, don't do it again. Uh, please don't. That sounds so cool. That sounds like Onigashima. That sounds so cool. A flying demon fortress. Oh my God, yes. Okay, so we got to figure out what we have to do in this uh, chamber. We already broke the seal. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how to get back home. Uh, well, so tell me what you know. Well, we knew that Bitch Girl was trapped in this room. We broke the seal. Then swapped her for you. And... We're still in this fucking room. So, so do we have a plan to get us all back home? We're kind of winging it right now. We're trying to find the b lowest point of this thing. Hopefully there's some kind of portal in here. Uh, I suspect that if uh, we might be able to find in this uh, Temple of Elemental Evil the aspects of fire and water that I might uh, be able to use to tra send us home. Or hopefully some other way. Alright. Hey. Well, is there anything left in this room that can help us with that goal? May I investigate the room under? You may. Guidance? Mister? Oh, yeah, of course. Guidance, always. Do I have to say it every time? Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. Rada, 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 rada. All right, so yeah, so you take a look around. And, you know, you... Now, the uh, throne is made of silver and looks to be set with 666 precious gems. Behind it is a tapestry. And when you peek behind it, you see a corridor, 80 feet long, 10 feet wide, unlit and no furnishings. However, at the southern end of it, when you, you know, look that way, you can see there looks to be a shelf there. And on the shelf are four dusty-looking stones. Uh-oh, these are more of these fucking keystones and shit. Um, keystones? What is, what is, uh, they look like? So are you guys going 
behind the tapestry and down that corridor. Like, he just poked his head around it as he was investigating. Oh, uh, yeah, here we go, behind the, uh... Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let's go down there and check them stones out. They probably have some kind of meaning. Some kind of mechanism. Yeah, so, behind the, uh, the deep purple tapestry in the rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like this. Oh. Oh, but it's a dead end. It's just a little back. Right, and then at the southern area, there's like these shelves. Hmm. Well, that could be important. All right, smart guy, you want to go take a look at it? Who? Who? I'm not the smart guy. Arcturus is the smart guy. That's who I was talking to. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll pull up my detect magic and I'll start poking around to investigate. Okay, so you cast detect magic. All four stones seem to be emanating evocation magic. Mm. How are they arranged? There are two shelves, two on each shelf. The top shelf on the left is the symbol for fire. Next to it is a symbol for water. The second shelf, you see, they're like flat stones. Uh, you can see scratched on these stones. On the left, the symbol for earth. And on the right, the symbol for air. I identify the symbol of, uh, let's go fire. So you put your finger on it and cast identify. Mm-hmm. I cast magical runes this morning. Okay. Identify tells you that this is the trapped stone of fire. Boom. <laughs> there is no is, boom. Is the, this the kind of the thing? The trapped we're stone of fire. Uh, yes, it is a magical trapped stone of fire. What is a stone of fire? It doesn't say. Arcana check? Sure. Guidance? Yes. You're Man, reasonably you're certain that that's control. the name of it, not not a generic thing. I'm sorry, can you repeat? That the stone is named the trap stone of the trapped stone of fire. That it's not a generic thing. There is no there is no such thing you would know of as a stone of fire. I identify each one in turn. All right. Well, you have the trapped stone of fire, the trapped stone of water, the trapped stone of earth, and the trapped stone of air. Would these be items you use to activate some sort of portal? Could they mean, like, trap, like the things are got the spell trapped in them? Or... I, I'd like to investigate more of this room. Sure, make an investigation check as you look in detail around I give you guys show. Yeah, you're poking around. And you can tell a couple of things. First, it looks like this whole back wall is actually not built into the side walls, but there's like um there's a seam there. Like the whole back wall is separate. Okay. A seam you say. I, I move back to the center of this room by the big opening in the wall on the opposite side of the wall. What's the wall made out of? Looks to be made out of stone. The other thing you notice as you're looking around is that on the eastern wall, you think you can make out that some of the bricks look to be maneuverable. I'm going to... Hey guys, can we take a short rest before we proceed? 
I guess. I just realized I still have uh, some rather loose organs. Yeah, if we're going to take a short rest, I'm going to give you some heals, Gilbert. All right. So where are you guys resting? Are you resting in this corridor behind the throne? Yeah. Okay. You said you're going to put some heals, Beta? There you go. All right. But yeah, the hour passes uneventfully. All righty. All set to go. I'd like to head back down to that passageway and check out this door. Okay, are you checking out the door on the east wall or the south wall? The one that had maneuverable bricks. That is the east wall. Okay. So yeah, you you can kind of make the outline of a door. What do you do? I attempt to find a way to open the door. There is no obvious way to open the door. Then I, you know, kind of try to push open my shoulder, try to, you know... My goulash! Open Find a, a hidden button or pulley or something like that. Hold on, you said there was a seam around like the wall. How much of the wall has like a seam around it? Bad boys, bad boys. What yeah, you... yeah, I know. I'm, I'm almost breaking the wall. You know, I think it has something to do with the order of the stones over there. Because the, the stones are next to the door, right? No, they're well five feet away. Yeah, well, how much of the wall has a seam around it, though? There's a five, like a, a door-shaped, you know, section. Oh, there's just a door-shaped section? Yeah, on the eastern wall. Okay. And then the whole southern wall has a seam around it. Oh, the whole, okay, yeah, so the whole, what do you mean around it, like? Like it's 10 feet wide, 20 feet tall? Yeah. Like that so whole, like, just... like that whole wall looks to, you know how when you usually build like a brick wall, and the even on a corner, the bricks are interlocking? Oh, they didn't do that. Here. They didn't do that here. There's a seam going all the way around this wall. Hey, Beta, humor me for a second. Go up against the uh, the southwest corner. I'll go to the southeast. And all then right. he, he like lines up to start pushing on the wall. Okay. You're pushing on the southern wall. Uh, the one that has the seam around it. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Why don't you guys both give me athletics checks then as you start pushing? Could have guns. I'll guidance both you and me. I don't think you can do that. You, it's a concentration spell, Beta. You have to pick one. I probably need to do the new guidance. You have the. You have guidance. I don't care. Alright. Would we consider help since we're helping each other push the wall? It requires two people. This is affects the DC more than anything. Okay. All right. All right, so you guys are pushing, 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 and it feels like nothing is going on. And then you hear uh, the sound of, of mortar cracking, the sound of stone on stone sliding, and the shelves collapse, the brick wall falls, revealing a, a secret niche about five feet deep behind this area. Dusty. On the Is ground, it? scattered about down here, you can see a small box, a rack holding five scrolls, a small metal cube, a ring, a mace, and a wand. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see what. Let's give me up the loop. Uh, wait, don't touch. Identify. All right. You're doing this as a ritual. 
Aye, aye. Which one are you starting with? Uh, what's on the far left? The wand. I start with the wand. All right. So you poke the wand and begin chanting. A round passes. The hair stands up on, on end. You hear a static charge build and a lightning bolt erupts along the entire length of this corridor. I need dexterity saving throws from everybody. Oof. Fuck, it bounces. No, I keep noticing something. The higher I roll on my saves to do bullshit, the lower I roll the rest of the night. I don't even think adding a d4, 2d4 to that will help. Gosh, yours is the 27, right? Frick. Uh, yeah, that's the 27. Okay, just checking. Yep. All right, well, Goulash and Azor passed to take half damage as this lightning bolt, you know, covers the length of this corridor. It bounces off my shield. And deals 66 lightning damage. Absorb elements. Okay. As it bounces off the niche wall and then heads back up up towards the, f the northern section. Are we in the path of it? It fizzles out around halfway to the northern, back to the northern wall. No. Okay. It, it did bounce, but the length of the corridor is such that it, it can't, can only hit each side once. Okay. What doth identify tell me? Um, okay, yeah, so another ten minutes pass as you finish identifying it. Hold on, let me pull this up. Because Realms Works keeps fighting me. The Gilbert, here we are. That's what you get, Gilbert. All right. Uh, what was next to it? The mace. Uh, beta? If you could juice me up with a little more hit points and all of you step out of this corridor, that'd be that'd be nice. All right, all right I will cast a cure wounds on fucking Gilbert. Hear you for 25. All right. I would like to identify the mace. All righty. Alright, where is that? Here we are. I'm gonna sit down and take a short rest while he does all his identifying. 
You guys already did take a short rest. I know, I'm just going to sit there and wait then. Technically. Well, he's identifying stuff. Oh, hell, it's going to take him ten minutes at an item. There's seven I that's six items. That's an hour. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. What's next to the maze? Next to the mace is a ring. I shall identify the ring. Okay. This one's rather straightforward. Alrighty. And what's next to the ring? Next to the ring is a small metal cube. Identify. Alright. This, this takes a bit more. <laughs> uh, conjures images of swamp. Uh huh. Of course, there's only one here. All right, gentlemen. We have here a wand of fireballs, a mace of smiting, a ring of featherfall, and Darn's instant fortress. Okay. The mace. Well, I don't need any of that. You can have that. So, uh, yeah, uh, one second. I'll just, I'll just post it. Ah, I see the typo I made there. Um, if you expend the wand's last charge, the wand crumbles into ash and is destroyed. There's no rolling. Okay. So it doesn't recharge? It is not a recharging wand. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that typo, because I missed that typo and understood it the way you intended. <laughs> yeah, I figured you would, especially when you saw the number of charges on it. That's interesting. So I'm thinking I'm going to take the fireball uh, wand. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm taking the... Um, I'm going to take the ring and the uh, mace. Hold on. Uh, Azor, do you want do you want an item? Uh, I don't 
really see myself using a mace or the ring, so I don't really care. Plus, weren't you warned about picking up strange ma magical items from ancient uh, dungeons? No. Yeah, I'll take the mace in the in the ring if nobody wants them. Both will work well for for Beta's build. Shall I just hold on to the fortress then? Yes, you should hold on to the fortress. You may never know when that. <laughs> we may need to use that real quick. It definitely fits the theme of me using important magical items to bullshit a boss. You can you can summon the Fortnite tower to give us height advantage. Some shit, I don't know. What? No, I'm going to drop it on someone's head. Animate object. Make it float above their head. Then activate it and drop it. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Uh, under what's the size of this object? When it's it's a one inch metal cube when it's not activated. So tiny. Yeah. Yeah, animate or levitate. Levitate it up over somebody's head, and then and then speak the command word and and end your spell. <laughs> Wait. So if I throw it. Not to rain on your parade, but animate objects does specify they have to be non-magical objects when you animate them. What about levitate? Don't think levitate cares. Levitate, you can levitate. With, uh, conjure barrage. Because it just needs a thrown item, I think. Non-magical. Oh god, that'd be some bullshit. Conjure barrage. That'd just a be... dozen of these things. Activate them in the air. Get pummeled by a dozen uh, fortresses. That's fucked up. What the hell happened to the castle? It's covered by castles. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. No, but I'm gonna take the ring and the ring and the mace. So. I guess we're backtracking from here. Do you guys think we should take the trapped cubes? Uh, maybe we shouldn't put them together, though. So maybe one, one cube yeah, for one, each Yeah, of yeah, each person carries one, yeah, but, yeah. I'll take Whoa. the water one, then. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Goulash. Mm -hmm. We're all gonna step away. Could you pick up... Wait, uh, Under, are those, are those trapped cubes still intact? Yeah, they just fell to the ground. Could you pick up the uh, fire one? Yep. First I take off my pack, and then I will go in there and pick it up. And we'll retreat to the other side of the room. Okay. So you, so you retreat to the other end of this corridor? No, the big room. Okay, so you guys go out into the big room, Goulash goes into the corridor alone and picks up the uh, firestone. Yep. Okay. I pick up the firestone. Does anything happen to me? So you, you bend down and pick up the firestone from where it fell. Mm -hmm. Behind you, you, you feel a breeze. I feel a breeze behind me. Yes. I look behind me. There's nothing there. Interesting. I'm going to put the firestone down and then pick up the... Uh, what are the other three elements? There's earth, water, and air. Heart! Go planet! No, we're still missing that one. Or yeah, earth, I, water, air, and fire are the four elements, yes. Okay, I pick up the air stone. Alrighty, you pick up the air stone. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, you see the area like in front of you, like five feet in front of you, get sprayed with green slime. I s That's... Okay. Yeah, it occurs to you that when you broke the wall, you were pushing it backwards, so these stones fell not over where they used to be. If you were, if the wall was still standing and you grabbed them, that's where you would have been standing. Oh, interesting. I, uh, 
I'm going to make sure not to stand in that area now. Next, I'm going to pick up the water stone. All right. You hear some tinks and some darts, you know, get shot out from the ceiling. Okay. And now, finally, I pick up the earth stone, also known as the stone. All right, you pick up the earth stone. Nothing seems to happen. Yeah, the stone stone. All right, I think this one might just be a rock. And then a lightning bolt erupts down the corridor. I need a deck save from you. All right. Can I see this? Oh, yeah, it's coming right at you. Ah, it's fulgurite. Right, that passes for half. Which means it passes for none. Good, so you don't take half of 66 lightning damage. Mm. Yep, Blink <laughs> off my shield. Yep, just bounces off your shield and fizzles out harmlessly later on. Uh, I love that is so master. broken! That is so broken! It's just a rogue ability. <laughs> Except I also get advantage on deck saves because I'm a paladin. It's not broken. Uh, don't mean you get advanced on deck saves because you're Wait, a you're a paladin? Or, because of the barbarian. Barbarian? I, yeah, I, I thought it was one day. A, 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 pal- a palibarian would actually be pretty tough to kill. It would be pretty tough. Alright, uh, I'm gonna pick up the... I'm holding the earth stone. Uh-huh. And... Hmm... Eh, what the hell, let's pick up all four stones and I'll get out of this little alcove. Or wherever. Alright, you pick up all four stones. Their traps reactivating. You also see a blur of metal when you pick up the fire stone. Oh, that was interesting. Looks like something sliced through where you would have been standing. Okay, should I make another save? No, because that's where you would have been standing had the n- things not been knocked over. So you're safe where you ah. are. And cool. then when you... Yep, and then you pick up you know, all four and you leave. All right. Yay. So, so fire has a swinging blade, water has darts, earth has a lightning bolt, and air shoots green slime. Nickelodeon ooze at people. Yeah, I don't get it either. It's probably acidic or something, right? Or poisonous? Yeah, but what does poison have to do there? I don't think it does. I don't oh, think there's any theming going on here. Th- this would be like if if I told you this here was the element of surprise, and then, you know... Well, the, the so North, North City is to the west, West City is to the south. No. Uh, and, and East City is also north. Where the fuck am I? But, uh, well, now that I have all the stones, I guess I put them in my pack and put it back on. Okay. All right, let's keep on exploring. How much do they weigh? One pound each. Right. All right, well, now we just have to go back to the Temple of Time, and then we can, uh... Yeah, no, that's all I got. So to be clear, you guys are going to leave the uh, small box and the squirrel rack behind? Oh, did he know? (laughs) No, Wait, hold up, hold up. The what? Remember I said that there was a small box, a scroll rack, a, a small metal cube, a ring, a mace, and a wand? Oh no, I missed that first part. Um, yeah, I, 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 will, I will identify. Maybe you shouldn't go back in the tunnel with those things. I knew we had enough stuff for a long, for a short rest. I knew we did. For him to identify. So what are you starting on? Uh, what were my choices again? There is a small box and a scroll rack containing five scrolls. Scrolls. Okay. Well, the scrolls are the easiest ones because you can just open them up and see what they say, right? <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Identifying while they're closed. <laughs> okay. So you go through and identify. This is rather straightforward. They are all spell scrolls. Of, not, here, I'll type it out so that you can you know. I cast magic runes. Boom! Yeah, Tiro, all of us have been traumatized by something Underdark did. I am mostly afraid of paper. 
he's killed me with a lot of, you know, notes. Yeah. Right, Mr. So- Meanwhile is afraid of rock, and I'm afraid of scissors. Am I afraid of Spock, then? <laughs> Rock, baby, scissors, Spock. <laughs> symbol, Discord. Yeah, so normally the spell symbol, when you cast it, you get to pick which symbol. This is oh, a scroll that only lets you pick. It's it's only this Discord. Neat. But you could still use it to scribe the generic symbol into your spell you box. Earth gravity! Oh, now, a great spell! Now, would... Would um, how should I put this? Would identify tell me if these were also trapped? Maybe. Magically? Depends on the nature of the trap. Some traps are, and curses are hidden from identify. If it was say explosive runes. If it was something like you know someone had cast cast like a glyph of warding on them to explode if you read them, yes, it would detect that. Which is essentially what, you know, explosive runes are. Today's a good day to be a wizard. Yeah. You can transpose those into your scroll book. Let's see. I can kill things in a circle. I can make people get lost. I can make things go topsy-turvy. I can eat beans for lunch. And I can sow discord. Uh, I can do all those things. Sounds perfect for you. I don't need Discord to use Discord. This is the part where you kick him. <laughs> Anything else? And the box. What about the box? You opening it? I'm identifying it. Okay, identify doesn't tell you anything about the box. Does it tell me it's a box? Uh, no, identify doesn't work on non-magical items. Have you tried opening it? I would like to listen to the box. Okay. It bites you. Make a perception box. check. Do you hear me to make a perception check? Yep. Okay. All right. As you're raising it to your ear, you hear the sound of glass tink- tinkling inside. All right. And you said this box is wood? It is. What kind of wood? Mahogany. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, that's, that's very nice. It's a very nice box. All right. Is it, uh, is it locked? It does not appear to have a lock on it. it- I am going to gingerly open the box. All right, you gingerly open the box, which actually doesn't have a hinge. It's rather like a like a sliding fit type one where you just pull the top off. Oh, neat. Inside, you see eight potion vials. Two of them glimmering red. One is an amber liquid with a scorpion's tail, fang, and a dead spider. Um you know, uh, inside of it. Ew. One is a muddy liquid. One is a potion that is separated into brown, silver, and gray layers, resembling bands of stone. One is of a clear liquid, though you can see some cloudy white impurities drifting in it. Out of curiosity, Mm -hmm. does it look familiar? Not terrible. Uh, okay, so it's not sovereign glue. No, it is not sovereign glue. Maybe I should taste test to find out. Maybe. Wait, did he drink a vial of glue in the recent past? He did. He uh, didn't know what it was when he did that, though. 
Arcturus gonna pull down his mask and show his dental work. It's hideous. It looks like he's permanently wearing a uh, like the plastic teeth protector athletes wear, <laughs> except it's made out of enamel and that's his teeth. Yeah, I had I I um I had to remove my own teeth with animate objects and ball bearings, and then I reassembled my own teeth with fabricate. Oh. Well, it's good to know this group has good dental insurance. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> one way to look at it. Well, we have full coverage, but you have to use a uh, an ball bearing dentist. <laughs> the network of approved dentists is very small. Yeah, yeah. Arcturus is like one of the only dentists on the planet. He 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 alone has contributed to the death of that nascent uh, profession. People take one look at what dentists do and want nothing to do with it. <laughs> well, there are plenty of dentists. He's the only orthodontist. <laughs> oh god, yeah, no one likes the, the network dentist. Alrighty, well, can you guess what I'm going to do under? Um, you're going to chug all eight potions simultaneously. Close, close. I'm going to mix in a couple pieces of chalk, some soap, and uh, 12 uh, bottles of Hydra blood. And an oil of slipperiness. And of two spell scrolls. And some oil. No, in all seriousness, identify. All right. You be an Tell identify. me about the loot. All right. Well, the two red po potions are easy. They're potions of healing. Uh, which kind? Generic. Like the, the basic kind. Alright. The Amber Liquid is a potion of longevity. The Muddy Liquid is a potion of animal friendship. The Three Banded One is a potion of climbing. The clear liquid with cloudy white impurities is a potion of flying. Oh, wait, one, one second. I'll, Animal I'll, friendship. Here, I can give you a list of these in a minute. Uh, there's a blue potion that bubbles and steams as it boiling, which is a potion of heroism. And finally, a syrupy, liquefied iron-looking potion, which is a potion of invulnerability. Oh, uh, under, just because this is also a bit of a tradition, my inventory is reaching nearly full if you feel the need to disintegrate me. Understood. <laughs> there you go. Well, I think the flying should go to the person with the feather falling. Uh -oh. I mean, I already cast fly all the time anyway. Can you fly normally? Not yet. Okay, so so we how about yeah, how about you get the potion of flying? Okay. Um someone's about to get hit by a train. You know, you hear how loud that train is? Yeah, I hear Yeah, we can noise. hear it. That's like a block and a half from my house. Make make sure it's not actually coming at your house right now. No, so, it, it sounds like that all the time. Hey Pete, you want potion of heroism? What's that do again? You get ten temporary hit points for an hour. You also are under the effect of the blessed spell with no concentration. Oh, that's useful. Yeah, I'll take that. Anyone it's a else? potion of invulnerability. 
uh, for a minute after drinking this potion, you have resistance to all damage. All right, well, that should go to one of you, because I already have resistance to physical damage. Do you guys mind if I take that, given my propensity to be exposed uh, to large quantities no, of you definitely should have that. All right, so I'll take uh, invulnerability. Uh, that leaves us with two healings, longevity, and French. Also, uh, yes, Azor? Or, I don't know. Uh, I was just saying, or I was just going to say, you might want to just take those for now, because at least the the healing longevity and for animal friendship I don't think we'll need uh, to have ready right away, at least for the animal friendship one. Fair enough. Alright, so I'll hold on to invulnerability, healing, longevity, and animal friendship. Actually, uh, take one of the healing potions. Okay, I'll take one of the healing. That way, all of us, if needed, are able to try to dose up another party member. True. I, I do These have... are what kind of healing potions? Regular. Uh, you got one, too? Uh, did you take one, Goulash? We're all taking one? You said to, didn't you? No, there, there's two. two. There's two. Oh, yeah. so, uh, I'm thinking Goulash and uh, Azor should have them. Yeah, yeah I don't need them. I don't need them. I, uh... Okay, I took yeah, one. Because honestly, in most situations, if I'm having to heal any of you, it's, yeah, I'm going to be just ejecting us from the plane. <laughs> Give the heroism to gu Goulash. Yep, he has it. I have it. All right. Uh, should we... Was that everything in the little alcove? Yes. Alright, you guys want to move on? I investigate the alcove to make sure there's not a hidden alcove behind the alcove. Make an investigation check. Guidance? Beta? Guidance? Yes, of course! Yes, but y you have to consent. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're looking at the back there, and you do, in fact, find a loose brick that you think could be pried out. Oh my god. I do so. Alright. Inside of there, you see what appears to be a scroll wrapped around the blade of a dagger. Identify. On what? The scroll. Okay. That is a scroll of illusory dragon. <laughs> Why would Under give us things like this? That makes no sense. Because cause Under likes to reward us? Because you have to remember that this was also like you know the treasure hoard to find behind a secret after you beat a demon lord. It's true. Mm. Be beat in air quotes. Yeah, we were most of the way there. I feel like at this rate, Underdark just keep in note of all the atrocities I commit on the multiverse. Oh, there are effects. And then Vecta ended up in Eberron, and one of those Eberron guys ended up in uh, no, Realms. no. You didn't send a, you didn't send Vecta to Eberron. You sent Iuse to Eberron. Uh, who's who's Iuse? <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the big bad evil guys of the Greyhawk setting, like end of the world multiverse type stuff. How do you spell it? I U Z. You use E for what? Yeah. I'm just fucking with you. Anyway, uh, anything else? So, so you just identify the scroll that's wrapped around this dagger. Do you do anything with the dagger? 
Well, yeah, I identify it. Ah, excellent. There you go. All right, guys. All right, what is it? I think there was another door outlined down here that we didn't uh, try to break through. Damn, that's a nice weapon. The wizard should carry that weapon. In case something gets up close to him and he wants to say no. I have other things I should be doing with that. I believe Azor should handle this blade. All right. In case he's ever disarmed. Azor, what is Azor? A wizard? You need a wizard? Uh, no, I am a ranger. Oh, that's right, you're a ranger. Oh, yeah, you definitely give him the dagger, yeah. You can you can go into Rogue, and that little dagger right there will become nasty. All right, but there was that other uh, door-shaped outline in the, uh, in the back part of the room, right? That is the case, yes. I'm going to go up to it and push on it. Okay, are you attempting to break it down? Uh, Because it doesn't move when you just push on it like with a generic amount of force. Yeah, I'm going to try to break it down, I guess, by pushing it. I will give you guidance! Athletics check. Really? I thought it would be performance to break it down. Uh, no. no. Unfortunately, it's not sentient, so you can't just make a cry with a terrible performance to open up. Uh... All right, you hear some creaking as the door is busted down. Cool. Revealing this... mm -hmm, a 20 by 30 room, unfurnished, save for a thick carpet on the floor and many empty wall sconces. On the eastern wall, you can see a closed wooden door and a hallway heading out the uh, southeast. Ah, this must be the way forward. Well, come on, everybody. All right, you head off. All right. So what do you do? Uh, I think someone should scout. I'll do it. What are we doing? I'll do it. Oh, you want to go first? What am I going first into? A hallway. To scout. Well, now you gonna send Beta to scout, really? When we have a rogue, I mean a ranger, who is should be good at sneaking. You're gonna send the battle droid out. I mean, 
Yeah. I mean, the one that does that sounds like a tank when she walks down in the r r r thing in full plate armor, magical plate. What? Okay, okay, okay. Let's let's get this going. So, what are you doing? We send the ranger to scout. I'd I'd like to do a cursory check of the room from a distance. Do I see any obvious signs of a trap? Or what distance? Signs where of a where trap? are you? People have already entered the carpeted room. Oh, we've entered. Okay. Well, let's look around the corner. I'm gonna look around the corner. Okay. You look around the corner. It is a ten foot wide corridor that looks to go fifty feet before opening up into a larger room. That is the end of your dark vision. You can see that when it starts to open up, the southern wall is frescoed. Though you can't make out what's on it. Oh, all right, just to say, I have disadvantage on any stealth rolls. So, or at you least that's what, at least that's what my sheet says. I Why? You, why? Uh, I'm wearing armor. What kind? Scale. Well, I that's why. Put that in wrong. Why are you wearing scale as a ro ro ranger? I think I put that in wrong. Just a sec. Can a ranger even wear scale? No. I think that was supposed to be. That's supposed to be uh, studded. I think. Never mind. Uh, yeah, you're a dex based character. What? All right, I'll I'll go forward and scout. I guess. Yeah, yeah, that'd be uh, leather. I think. All right, yeah. go ahead and make a stealth check as you sneak your way down this corridor. Eleven. All right. You guys hear the ranger thudding his footsteps down the corridor. Oh my god. My equipment jingling with every step. Does Stunned give disadvantage? No. Uh, he just oh, he just rolled bad. Yeah. All right. You have a 16 in your decks? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. As you get closer and closer, you see that the walls of the 20 by 40 foot room ahead are frescoed. Two suits of plate armor hang from each wall, north and south, so a total of four. Each suit appears to be made of black metal, enameled with strange glyphs and pigments of red, white, green, and brown. Surrounding a golden skull, the armor is strangely fluted and spiked. The helmets are wrought to give the wearer a most frightening appearance. Each of the four suits of armor also bears a huge two-handed sword. Beyond to the east, you can see a ten-foot, a small ten-foot-wide corridor that, after ten feet, again opens up into a larger room. All right. Uh, is there anything interesting with the? Swords or armor? Make an investigation check as you walk up to look at them. Oh, that is not what I wanted, but. Yeah, let's try that again. Twenty-seven. Okay. Yeah, you walk up to it. And you realize that they are magical suits of armor as they begin moving. And you should roll initiative. Uh, crap. Uh, should initiative. we all roll? Yeah, you should all roll. It's going to be fairly loud when these clanking suits of armor begin attacking people. Clang, clang, clang. Yeah, What's that, that guys? Do you think there's initiative?
All right, Goulash. So yeah, you hear the sound of a bunch of plate mail starting to move down the corridor. Okay, I go down the corridor until I see what's there. Okay. Uh, what's your movement speed? 40. All right, 40 gets you most of the way down that corridor. You're still 10 feet from the end of it, and uh, it'd be 10, 20, 30 feet to the enemy. Uh, yeah, you can see this this suit of real horrific-looking plate armor with a uh, two-handed greatsword um, about to engage uh, Azor, who's standing right in front of it. Hmm. Is there... Do I see a, the person inside the armor, or is it like two... Uh... You do not see a person inside the armor. It's magical. Does that mean I see no person inside the armor, or does that mean you, I you can tell? see? Um, you can see through like the where you would expect gaps and stuff to be where, that would a person would kind of fill out that there is nothing mm. inside the suit of hollow of armor is hollow. All right, I'm gonna yell down the hallway. Hey, now would be a good time for that mace, and then I'm gonna. I used all of my movement just to be able to see them. Uh, do you have dark vision? No. So, it, actually, you're blind. You don't see anything. Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, all right, yeah, I don't see anything. Um, there are no sources of light. I, I hear clanging, though. You hear clanging? It sounds like metal. All right, well, I didn't yell anything down the hallway, so instead I am going to attempt to find the source of the clanging. Sounds like it's 30 feet in front of you. Okay, how much movement did I use to get here? 40 feet. Okay. Uh... Hmm. I am going to use my item interaction to pull out a torch and then use my action to light it. I believe you can do that with just an item interaction. Uh, no, lighting a torch is an action. Oh, okay. Well, you light a torch. And then I put it in my mouth. All right, you put it in your mouth, revealing, you know, the suits of armor as described, two of them visible along the southern wall. All right. Well, that was my action and my movement, so that's all I get. All right, Azor. All right. Uh... Sorry, I am not very familiar with this. Uh, my abilities. Uh, can I use Distant Strike to hit both of them? Distant Strike. Well, what's Distant Strike do? Distant Strike allows me to, on an attack, uh, teleport 10 feet, hit, and then uh, teleport another 10 feet to another target to hit them. Let's see, when you take the attack action, you teleport 10 feet before each attack to an unoccupied... Yeah, you can do that, so you can attack... So you're going to attack the guy in front of you, then teleport over. How many attacks you got? I have two attacks, and if I hit both of them... It says I can hit a third, but I'm assuming that's a, a distinct entity from the last two. Right, so, it, well, it would be, each when you take the attack, you can teleport to 10 feet before each attack to an unoccupied space. You can see if you hit both attacks, you can make a third attack, which would include a third teleport. All right. So there are four suits of armor in this room. You are currently standing in front, in melee, with one of them. Are you attacking the one in front of you or teleporting to one of the others? I am attacking one of the, one in front of me, and then after teleporting to another and trying to hit that one. Okay. Roll to hit on the first guy. Fourteen. Miss. All right. Uh. Teleport deeper into the room to the second one that you see? Yeah. All right. Poof, you're over there. Twenty. That hits. Five damage. All right. Yeah, you hit him. What did you hit him with? I hit them with a short sword. Alright, you stab it. And while it did some damage, it did not appear to be particularly effective. Alright. And... Uh, can I use Planar Warrior as my... Uh, bonus action. To 
hit when I hit? Or does that apply next round? Let's see here. Uh, as a bonus action, choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of them. The next time you hit that creature on this turn with a weapon attack, all damage becomes force damage, and the creature takes an extra 1d8 force from these. That is something you should have done before you attacked somebody. Oh, yeah, no. it. The autofill on the features on the sheet doesn't say this turn, so I see that on the official thing, though. Yeah. I'll just keep that in mind for next turn. Alrighty. Anything else? Uh, no, that's it. All right, beta. Okay, uh, Beta's going to blast it. Okay, yeah, you can see the one at the end of the hall hallway from where you are. <sighs> These are animated. Oh, the, oh, the way, he's got a torch out, so you can actually see both of the ones along the southern wall. Yes, so they appear to be animated suits anyway, of armor. So Beta can see in the dark anyway, so it doesn't matter. 60 foot range though, right? Yeah. Right, so the, only the first one's within 60 feet. The other one's at 80 feet away. Or, sorry, yeah, about 80 feet away. Oh, uh, okay. But the, but it's within the torch light, so you can see it anyway. Okay, okay, okay. Can, uh, hey, uh, Goulash, if Beta tosses you that mace, could you use it? Would it do more damage or less damage for you? Because you have more attacks than Beta. Beta only gets one attack around. And it does a D6 plus 4 for const well, with Beta, because Beta don't have any... You have higher strength, so it'd be more. Are they considered constructs or undead under? I mean... Yeah. How would you know? Can I make uh No, I'm, I'm telling you, 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 your character has no way to know. Oh. I mean... Unless you have something that explicitly detects, like, undead, like, um, channel divin like a uh, divine sense or something. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Whoa, whoa, okay, so there's no way I can open it. Um... You know what? I can, I'm still gonna blast it. Which one? Both of them, but that. Okay, roll to hit then. I assume you're using Eldritch Blast. You would, you would think that, but no. What are you doing then? I'm twinning a guiding bolt. Nice. Well, roll to hit. Nothing. Both miss. Really? Really? <sighs> Okay. Okay, that cost me a spell slot. Alright. Alrighty. And a fucking sorcery one. Okay. Then, um... Uh, you know what? I'm gonna... Fuck out my action surge and do it again. Alright. Roll to hit two more bolts of radiant energy. Both hit. Right, but... Ooh, 14 points of radiant damage to both of them. All right, so yeah, these two bolts of guiding radiant energy fly down the corridor and hit both of them. Both spells hit the armor and are absorbed with no effect. No damage dealt, and they do not start glowing. What the fuck? No, wait, I missed my turn, didn't I? And we haven't gone around again. Oh. Really? Oh my god. 
Anything else for me, Beta? No, 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 no. All right. Well, there is one enemy in the room. So the four armors all clanky, clanky, clanky walk up to Azor with their great swords. And uh, they begin That's introducing dangerous. Azor to the uh, business end of, his, of their uh, swords. Anything Why did you move 15? back, Azor? Why did you move back? Why did you stay in that room? Because uh, I'm channeling my inner Azor. Yeah, you're going to get chopped up like yeah. Azor did. Alright, they each get two attacks and begin slicing you up. What's your AC? 15. Fifteen. So three, three hits. Hit. One is yep. a crit. Ouch. Dealing a total of thirty-nine slashing damage. I am bloody. And it is Arcturus's turn. Gilbert, are you here? Unfortunate. Goulash, it is your turn. All right. I can see these guys thanks to my flaming mouth stick. Yes. You can see four suits of armor, all horrific looking, with great swords, yep. and they are uh, hacking up your ranger. Oh, yep. Also horrific looking. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be holding that torch in my mouth like an oversized stogie. <laughs> And I'm going to rush into... Actually, the, uh, it'll look better once I rage. And then I'm going to rush into melee. And, uh... Uh-huh. And, yeah, I'm going to start attacking. All right. Roll to hit. Oh, sorry, I forgot. We don't rush into melee anymore. We Ukrainian into melee now. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, what the hell, let's, uh, let's make it reckless. Actually, no, first I'm going to try to push one of them over. Then maybe we'll make it reckless. Okay. They're not large or anything, are they? Uh, no, they're medium. I'm back. Sorry about that. Well, you back. your turn. I kind of figured there was a bit of an accident. All right. I guess I knock one of them prone. You knock one of them prone. Cool. I presume that's the one you're attacking? That is indeed the one that I'm going to attack. Makes sense. Three hits. Thirty-four slashing. Well, that one looks bloodied. Cool. Uh, that'll be it. Okay. Azor. All right. I... I'll, uh... So if I move out normally, I'll, they'll get an attack of opportunity on me, right? Correct. So I cast a uh, Misty Step and move out of the center of them behind uh, Goulash. Okay, are you going immediately behind him, or are you moving 30 feet in that direction? Uh, he's in melee with the, like, like he's in melee with one of them, so you'd be like just on the other side of them. Uh, yeah, I'll be immediately behind him. Okay. Yeah, I, I would have gotten close enough that you could probably get behind me and stay within five feet. Well, I can move 60 feet with it, so. Yeah, I just mean there's room. Yeah. All right, yeah, you teleport behind Goulash, peering in with, out of mist. Yeah, Goulash's M.O. is that he just runs in there and knocks somebody over and, like, starts mauling them on the ground. Oh. Anything else, uh, Azor? Uh, let's see. Can I also cast, uh... Let's see, what is it? Magic weapon at 4th level? No. If you cast a spell as a bonus action, any other spells you cast can only be cantrips. Alright. 
Uh, and spells are actions, right? Most of them are actions. Some of them, they tell you what they are. Like, you know, casting time will tell you if it's an action or something else. These spell sheets are not very... Okay, so that was a bonus action. So can I make an attack on the one on the ground? You can move forward and make an attack on the one on the ground, yes. You would have advantage on it because he is prone. And hey, we finally have somebody who can benefit from my uh, from my approach to fighting. Instead of just fucking over all the ranged people. What do you mean? I have <laughs> animate objects. Oh yeah, true. But you lost your marbles, so it doesn't matter anymore. So, 25. That it? Okay. And well, it doesn't appear to be very par uh, particularly effective, but it does do some damage. And can I make a second attack against him? If you have a second attack, absolutely. That hits. Five damage. Mm -hmm. Again, not particularly effective, but you do some. Anything else? Uh, that is it. Alrighty. Beta. Beta is going to walk up to one of these things and wreck it with my mace. All right, the closest one is 60 feet away from you. So you you have, what, 30 feet of movement normally? You know what? Watch this. I'm going to misty step 55 feet. Okay. Right in front of this guy. Uh-huh. All right, so I assume you're trying to hit the prone one? Yes. All right, you have advantage. Well, that's a crit. Okay. So on a crit, do I add double the dice and add the extra damage? Is this the Mesa Smiting? Yes. Yes, you double the dice plus the extra bludgeoning damage. Okay, is it a construct or it is. A nine? Huh? It is a construct. Ooh, damn. So you should also note that the Mesa Smiting is a plus three versus Constructs. So it's a plus three bonus to your damage roll, not a plus one. Twenty-five points of bludgeoning damage. All right, you smite it, and it is smote. The armor is destroyed. Ooh, cool! It had less than twenty-six hit points. Anything, anything else on your turn? Uh, no, 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 no. Well, get ready to smack the other one. But no, I got no more actions. All right. Well, there are three of you over there and three suits of armor. So let's see. The first one is going to attack Azor. All right. My AC is 15. It misses. Second one attacks Beta. 
Does an 18 hit beta? Not today. And the third one attacks Goulash. Does a 23 hit Goulash? It does. Damn, Goulash. Barely. Why you gotta break like I'll that? Get under. Yep. Uh, 17 points of magical slashing damage. Cool. And it is your turn, Arcturus. Range? 60 feet. I'm gonna walk up 30, Firebolt. Okay. Uh, which one? There are three. Which is the most damage looking? None of them look damaged. Uh, Do you want the one fighting Azor, Beta, or Goulash? Let's go with Azor. Alright. Hey, if I have if I've resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing with no qualifier, does that also apply to magical damage? Yes. Cool. That hits. Your firebolt hits it and is absorbed, having no effect. Bummer. Anything else? Nope. Goulash. All right. Uh, is that one still prone, or did it get back up? It's dead. I assume. Oh, it died. Okay. I'm going to try to knock over another one. Well, there is that one that tried to hit you, or it did hit you. It did hit me. Uh, I'm going to hit him back. As one But does. first, I'm going to try to knock him over. Yep. He got a 13. Which I think is your modifier, isn't it? It's, uh, my modifier is actually a 14. Mm-hmm. So as long as I don't uh, roll a minus two, I'll be okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to roll. Yeah, uh, he just falls over. He falls over. There we go. All right, three hits. Cool. Twenty-nine magical slashing. Okay. Anything else, you big can opener? All right, Azor. All right. Can I cast a magical weapon at fourth level on my short sword? Yes, you can. All right, I do that, and then I do planar, no, distant strike. So that's the two hits, and if they both hit, then I can attack for a third. Okay, sure. Make your two. Are you attacking the guy in front of you that was attacking you, or are you attacking the prone guy that Goulash knocked over? Uh, first will be the prone guy. All right. You have advantage on it. Twenty seven hits. Or, or I guess that was a question. Right, I'm telling you it hit. Nine damage. All right. Well, since you hit him with a magical weapon, he takes all of that and is now bloodied. Who are you attacking next? Uh, the next closest one. Ah, uh, that guy is like he's not dead. He's still in melee with you. He that is technically the closest one. Yeah. Oh, you can attack him? the uh, attack the prone one. He did. He just did. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm gonna attack the next one. That's okay. standing. That would be the one that attacked you before. Roll to hit. That also hits. Yeah, you, just, you guys just see Azor's blinking around the, the room just stabbing all three of these guys, or trying to. 11 damage. And Arts. since I uh, hit that, I get to hit the last guy. All right, you blink over to Beta's roll to hit. That hits. Uh, 
10 damage. Alrighty, yeah. Anything and, else in your turn? Uh, no, that is it. Okay, beta. I'm gonna go up and smack the armor that's smacking, trying to smack me! Alright, it's right in front of you. Road hit. That hits. All right, that bloodies him, but he's not destroyed. Anything else? Yeah, bonus action sanctuary. <laughs> All right. Well, their turn. Well, well, the one Azor left behind is going to uh, walk up behind Azor and try to stab him. Does a nine? Yeah, nineteen hits, right? Yeah. And so does a twenty. Yeah, no, twenty-six. Yep. Total of eighteen slashing damage. Ouch. The one over by Goulash is going to stand up and try to stab Goulash. Nope. Yeah. And the one by Beta is going to try and stab Beta. So it's got to make a couple of wisdom saves. What's the DC on Sanctuary Beta? Uh, the DC is 18! Alright, well, I guess they're attacking Azor then, since he's also in melee. <laughs> okay. I will let you do that. Oh, well. So it just um, turns and just stabs Azor a bunch of times. Well, that's a crit again. Dealing an additional... Oh, shit! 31 slashing damage. And I am downed and not looking too great. Don't worry. Be alright. Alright, Arturus. Uh, I'm going to advance 30 feet. Uh huh. Taser hand. Oh, okay. That, uh, that just took down uh, Azor. Alright, you go up next to Beta and try to tase that one. It's all metal all the time with these guys. That hits. The magical energy of your taser is absorbed and has no effect on him. Fuck! Well, that's all I got. All right. Goulash. How many are left? Three. Okay. Uh, one of them is wounded, though. Two of them right. are bloodied, one is wounded. Okay, uh, I'll go for one of the bloodied ones. Well, the one right in front of you that tried to hit you is bloodied. Alright, let's try to push him down again. Alright. You continue to bully the suit of armor. Uh, I really didn't need a net 20 here, Bangbot, but thank you. Fuck that armor in particular. Alright, he trips extra hard. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll go one at a time for him. Okay. Yeah. Alright, he is still alive. Still alive, however, barely. All right, then. Hit. 
Oop, nope, sorry, that should be only a 7, so that's 12. Okay. It is destroyed. Cool. Alright, that's my turn. Alrighty. Azor, death save. I, uh... That is a failure. Fail. Do you get a plus? Why do you have a plus one? Oh, shoot. Uh, I'm just curious. Usually death saves are flats, unless there's something special going on. Yeah, no, I accidentally added my uh, con to that. Ah, yeah, no, death saves are not con saves. They're something different. All right, beta. Well, I fail anyway, so... I am going to cast Cure on Hazor. Or Azor. I am going to heal him. He is in melee with us, right? I can Did you just say you were going to cast Cure on him? Yes. Uh, cure wound. Cure the <laughs> <laughs> Hey, at least it wasn't like Kiriga or something. Yeah. I mean, uh, he is right beside me, right? He is. Okay. I'm just going to reach over and touch him. Yep. Roll that heal. Nineteen points. All right, Azor, you wake up with nineteen points, prone on the ground, with one level of exhaustion. Nice. Anything else, Beta? Um, no, because I'm bonus actioned. No, I am done. Okay, these guys. Well. Uh, the one that was attacking Azor is going to continue doing so. Beta can't, like, move in the way? Damn. Nope. One hit. For seven points of slashing damage. Fucking hell. Get out of here. Get out of there! Ah! The one that was attacking Beta is going to try and attack Beta. However, Beta is still protected by Sanctuary. Looks like it. Looks like it has no choice. It must attack Azor. Oh no! I'm here. Well, those. Uh... Now he just wants to kill Azor. For twenty-two slashing damage, uh, you are back unconscious. Mm-hmm. And then the third one is going to to stand up and attack Goulash. And it misses. Didn't I kill him? Oh yeah. Okay. He, th- the ghost of him, thinks real hard about attacking you, but even then, it doesn't strike. Nah. Sorry. Just... No. Sorry. Forgot to mark down. Yeah, you're right. All right, Arcturus. There's two left. Yes, a bloodied one that is trying to engage Beta, but keeps getting redirected into Azor, and then one that's just attacking Azor. Am I able to position a shatter on these guys? Yes. As long as you're okay with hitting everybody but you in the party. There's no way to position it up or slightly away? No, because it's it's uh, like you're standing on one square. In front of you is Beta. To, the, to her right is the one attacking Beta. To the one up front of that is Azor. And then in front of Azor is the third one. So there's no way to hit both of them with Shatter without hitting a party member. What's the minimum uh, combination of parties? One. Also, do not cast it on me. I am carrying all of the valuables. Like, like you could easily hit one or the other with just Shatter and just hit that one. Oh, wait, wait. I have a way to select that. All right. Um, Am I a melee with anybody? Uh... No. Well, you're te- right? No, you're not. All right. No, yes, you are. Sorry, the one that was attacking Beta. You are melee with that one. My bad. I want to back up from him. Okay. Well, he's going to take an attack of opportunity. But he's going to miss because he's a dumb dumb. Does a 17 hit you? I allow it. Oh, okay. Is 10 slashing damage. All right. And some arcane gesturing, and I'm going to use a chromatic orb thunder. Okay, roll to hit. 
So I guess you got that thing that lets you attack when you get hit. What? How, how are you making an attack? Oh, that's right. This is your turn. Shit, my bad. <laughs> I confused myself. I was Thunder's like, you will die already! Damn it! That misses. Uh, all right. Well, uh, that'll be my turn. All right, Goulash. How many are left? Two? Two. There's one that's trying to attack Beta and failing, that's bloodied, and then one that's attacking Azor that is just injured. Uh, let's kill the one attacking Azor. Okay. Hopefully. All right. You run First, up I'm to... going to uh, attempt to inflict prone upon him. Uh-huh. Ooh. Work. You knock the murder bot over. All right. And now I'm going to give him a taste of his own medicine. Joke's on you. He doesn't have taste buds. Uh, well, he's going to have someone I've done. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but he's not going to like it. All right, Goulash begins aggressively licking the armor. All oh, those hit. Cool. Including the crit. Forty-four magical slashing. All right. He is badly bloodied on the verge of death, but he is still alive. Interesting. Uh yeah, that's it. Alrighty. Azor. Death save. One pass. Hey. Now, when you do um, stop being unconscious, the death saves yeah, do reset. Yeah, okay. Just making sure you're aware. Beta. Thanks. How uh, many? I'm going to hit another one of these suits armor. Well, there's a there's a bloody one in melee with you. Let me hit the bloody one. All right, roll to hit. That hits. The armor is destroyed. Anything else? Um, let me see if I have that ability. <laughs> No, I don't have that one. You can't get it to the next, next level. Okay. Um, then, no, I don't think I have anything else. I don't think I can cast a bonus action spell. All right. This guy. Well, his target is still alive. So he's going to try and stab Azor. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. I can do something for a bonus action. What are you doing? I'm going to heal um, um, Azor since he's unconscious. I'm going to heal him for... My healing word, him for 12 points. All right. So, Azor, you wake up on the ground with 12 hit points and a second level of exhaustion. <laughs> and hey, 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 don't worry. I've had it up to five with Gilbert. Don't worry about it. We can keep going. Had it up to five? What? All right. And then, he try then the murder bot tries to murder Azor. The one, the one that is still in front of Azor is the only one left. Yep. <sighs> and critical. Oh my god, really? <laughs> Azor <laughs> is god. back unconscious. And I'm down again. How many levels of exhaustion are you on, Tiro? Three. Well, this will be his third, right? You... Uh, yeah, I'm on two. This will be my third. 
Or it Taurus, it is your yeah. turn. How fucked up does this thing look? It is near death. Alright. Chromatic Orb, Thunder. Alright, roll to hit. Fourteen thunder. The orbs absorbed by the armor with no effect. Anything else for Taurus? I'm just. Arcturus is just gonna stare at his spell focus with disappointment. That's it. <laughs> okay. Goulash. Is there just one left? Or... Just the one. Alright. Is he standing up? Of course. Well, let's fix that. Uh-huh. He falls no. over. Only two, I think. Only two. That one. All right, just twenty slashing. All right, it is destroyed. Yeah, Anything yeah. else? Uh, no, I think we're good. All right, Azor, death save. Well, that's one failure. Oh my God, Beta. All right, Beta is going to use a healer's kit on Hazor. I am not healing him and giving him another no, one. hold on, Hazor. Roll that d20 again, because you... Oh, wait, no, you're only at two. You're not at three yet. Never mind. Yeah, I'm going to roll your... Uh, I want to I wanna, I wanna use a healing, healer's kit. Okay. Which stabilizes Hazor. Yes. All right, you don't hey, make any more rolls, but you're not going to get another point of exhaustion. So we'll just hang out here until he wakes up. He does you... need to roll a d4. Azor, please roll a d4. You will wake up after three hours. But you guys are out of initiative. Yay. I like how you're just healing me for me to get slapped back down immediately. So you can see. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I figured with everybody standing in melee, he wouldn't keep going after the little guy. But apparently, they kept going after the little guy. Uh. They yeah. fight mindlessly. Like I'm reading the description here. They fight mindlessly until destroyed. <laughs> So, so literally, they have target fixation. Just one side of me, someone was healing me. The other side, someone was whacking me with a great sword. But now that you guys are standing in this room, you can see that the frescoes on the north and south wall show crowned and robed humans attended by demons of minor sorts and slaves bearing rich rewards parading in triumph before a horrible, bloated figure upon a throne-like seat. The molted, fungus body shape of this creature is topped by a toadstool-like growth with a familiar face upon it. The body has four elephantine legs, but no visible arms. Seated beside this abomination is an obese male demonic figure, also seated upon a throne. Damn, I think we found Papa Nurgle's crib. Hey. hey. Uh, Papa Nurgle. Yeah. So, I think we, uh... Yeah, all, all that's in the room. Is that at the end of the hallway, or is that just the hallway? Uh, that is the end of the, end of the hallway. There is a small ten-foot segment that looks to lead to another room to the west, to the east. Oh, yeah. I mean, cool fresco, but let's keep going. Okay. So you're walking... You are walking into that uh, eastern room? Yep, and this time I'm going to do it, because I think I might 
even be stealthier than our ranger, and also more durable. Okay. Actually, I might be stealthier. Oh, really? On a scale of like one to ten, how stealthy are you? On a scale of one to ten, I'm a three with no disadvantage. Eight. Fuck. Yeah. The barbarian is stealthier than everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, th- will, will the uh, stealthy barbarian please make a stealth check as you creep into this room? Sure. Also, I'm he's creeping into this room with like this <laughs> massive fucking sack of like stolen shit on his back. It's mm-hmm. Just like grinching it up all through here. <laughs> You're a mean one, Mister Grinch. Ta-da. Oh. Except I'm actually I'm actually not very stealthy right now. Could I have some guidance? <laughs> yes, you may have the guidance. Thanks. Yeah, not bad. All right, you creep into this hall. Decorate the walls of this room are decorated with wall murals, all of them showing demons of lesser sorts paying homage to uh, humans of evil mind. Here are also scenes of killing and destruction, obviously showing the deeds which made such homage due. A plain armchair of black wood is centered upon the east wall, opposite a ten-foot-wide exit that you came through. Many bronze crescents lend the wall, but no other furniture is here. There is a closed wooden door to the north. I'm still unconscious, right? Yeah, you're still unconscious. That that was just Goulash doing lone scouting to the east. Mm-hmm. All right. Wait, hold on. What am I? What am I looking at here? That's the room, the eastern room that you just went into. It just led back to where we were. Ah. Uh-huh. Oh. Well, I was kind of hoping that this would be the way forward. What about the door? Door. Yeah, there's a door. Where? Over there. Which part of the map has a door on it? Left side. Yeah, in the. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The let's let's door. go back and look in the door. Maybe there's something interesting in there. Is that what you're doing? Uh, yeah. I mean, I I know where this leads. We've been there before. Yeah, I go back, and I open the door, or attempt to. Okay, you're going alone. Yeah. No, no, I'll I'll, I'll follow. Oh, okay. Not in with him, but I'll follow. All right. Beta will accompany him. So you're all just leaving the unconscious Azor alone in the mural room? Got it. Oh no, no, Dan, no. no, no! We pick up the unconscious Azor. Drag me by my. Foot. He is a gnome, right? Mm-hmm. Now then, I pick him up and carry him. <laughs> All right. Add 45 pounds to your backpack. Alright, Gosh, you're at that door. You're going to open it? Yep, I'm going to open it. Alright, you open it. Revealing a 20 by 40 long long room decorated in purples and red. Rugs, cushions, upholstered furniture, wall hangings, all of them, those colors. A large divan covered in plum silk worked with a nauseating green and orange figures dominates the north wall. Behind this couch is a tapestry depicting the spherical nature, uh, the spherical creature with the mushroom neck and head. Before the couch are several stools of cinnabar. All the wood is inlaid with mother of pearl, showing demons, fungi, and worse. The wall cressets and sconces are of bright copper, either recently attended or magically kept polished. 
Before a throne, a gold bowl contains platinum pieces. Well, I'm not touching that. On the eastern wall is another closed wooden door. Well... Wait, wait, wait. One sec. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Um, you said that there's a, a spherical-shaped creature with a mushroom neck. Yeah, it looks a lot like the top half of uh, the, the Zug to me that you just fought. Like a zoomed like the, in look on it. Like the... Like the neck is below the mushroom crown? I'm having trouble picturing a round creature with a neck. Uh, let me see if I can find a picture and show you what I mean. So imagine it's only showing this part, and then it says it looks spherical. Ah, uh, okay. Alrighty. Alright, so what do you guys do? I am still unconscious on the ground. I propose that our sneaky barbarian goes first. Into where? I am sitting in the oh, room. The door at the end of the room. Unconscious. Yeah. I thought we were going to stay yeah. in the room with the unconscious Azor until he woke up. All right. Yeah, I'll go in there. If I can have some guns. Well, if you got a lot of sight. Oh, well, can't I'm you just bring him in here? Oh, yeah, that's right. I am carrying him. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, sure. Yeah. I'll just that's carry cool. him along with you. With us. All right, so, Goulash, are you you're trying to sneakily open the door? I'm trying to sneakily open the door. Roll stealth check. I did. Oh, okay, that's what that was. All right. Well, you make a lot of noise as you open the door. Clank, clank from all the stuff I'm carrying. Yeah, clank, clank. You know, and then the door is like creaking as you open it. Uh, Revealing that the, a room of deep purple. All furnishings of the similar hue. A mauve carpet, lilac and puce wall hangings, even a long table with 12 chairs and a larger one at its head are lacquered violet. Mm, good taste. I love the early work. Bronze candelabra are on the table, and bronze wall sconces are placed at regular intervals. The south wall bears a blank space where it looks like something had once covered a section of it, though nothing is evident. There is also another closed door on the eastern wall. All right, uh, I'll go through. Can I still see Beta? Mm -hmm. Beta, can I get more guidance? Yes, you can get more guidance. All right, and then I will go through the final door. All right, you. I hope. Make a stealth check. Once again, you make a racket. Mm -hmm. 
One day we'll get a long rest. One day. Damn you. But as you open the door to this small room, you can see that it contains an assortment of weapons. A longbow, a quiver with a score of arrows, a longsword, a spear, and a sheaf of four javelins. All of the weapons except the bow are silvered. The arrowheads appear to be made of solid silver. Fancy. And this room is a dead end? It is a dead end, 10 by 10. All right. I think it's clear I'll send in the, uh, the smart people to go figure it out. Detect magic, I'm going in. You cast Detect Magic. Uh, believe it or not, the only thing that is magical is in that first room. The uh, wall scresh, uh, cressets and sconces are all magical, emanating abjuration magic. Identify. It appears that they are enchanted to be ever clean. Hmm. All right. And you believe that each one, if you were to pull them off the wall and sell them in town because of their magical, ever-clean nature, each one would be worth 100 gold pieces. And there are a dozen of them in the room. How much do they weigh? Two pounds each. Goulash. Goulash, can you pick these up? Pick one up. These? Or point to the uh, Everclean? What are they? They don't get dirty. Yeah, what are they? Nice. I'm, I'm still waiting for an answer here. They're wall sconces. Wall sconces, thank you. What, what do you want those for? Because they'll sell. Okay, how much do they weigh? Two pounds, 100 gold apiece. There's 12 of them. Okay, yeah, I can take those. You said 1,200 gold apiece, two pounds each? Yeah? Sorry, what was that? You said there was 12 of them and they're 100 gold and two pounds each? Yes. All right. I have. All right, so what do you guys do now? Well, where do you guys think we should go? Uh, well, you said you need to find the, uh, 
the two things, right? I, I said I think that's what I need to find. Okay, well, that's the best lead we have right now. So, yeah. So you're just standing in this purple room. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, we should try to figure out where we can find those things that you're looking for. I figured those stones might have something to do with it. I don't know what they're good for, though. Uh -huh. All right. How long have we been adventuring under? Uh, it's been about six hours. Yeah, we got like two hours left. You want to... Well, we already went to the fire area, right? Didn't we? Well, if we've explored all this, we might want to go to the other side of the big room. Okay, let's go there. All right, let's go. All right. Heading back the way you came. You travel to the large pillared room. The throne still sits in the northern section. Two hallways lead east. And also the stairs heading up to the south. One closed wooden door, also. You know what, I'll just give you a map. There you go. Well, yeah, I'm thinking we need to check out that bottom right door. Uh, that throne there is the one that looks like mushrooms, right? Or like it's made out of people, but mushrooms are growing through the people. Yep. Yeah, let's check out that southern door. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I, I'm detecting... Uh, with with detect plot and event trigger if we cross like too far into the room and that's when the final boss will start so we need to not trigger that event alright so you go to the wooden door at the southeast goulash if you would sure I open it all right. Revealing a rectangular room, the plastered walls of which are decorated with many murals depicting scenes in which humanoids are being robed in finery of various sorts and given crowns of gold adorned by devices of skulls. Above all are paintings of a golden skull wearing a silvery crown, in which are set gems of red, blue-green, crystal, and orange-brown. The floor is tiled in black and yellow squares, each one foot across. The southern wall shows scenes of elemental destruction, and under each depiction is a chair. Save for four cresciates, the room is otherwise bare. A hallway appears to lead east. Uh, I guess we can keep going east. What do you all think? Sounds like a plan. If it's the one way to go, that's the way we go. Alright, you head east. Into another room. This one, the plastered walls, show scenes of revelry and debauchery. Involving coronated individuals similar to those in the previous chamber. Those rewarded in the antechamber were evidently taken here to be feted. Couches, cushions, and pillows surround small tables. 
the place is in disorder, as if as if those once here left hurriedly. Several stands are tipped over as are chairs. Stains on the carpet show where food and drink were spilled and never cleaned. Dishes, ewers, and drinking vessels lie in scattered profusion. All the furnishings appear to be of excellent workmanship and materials, but all are disgusting in what they depict. The walls have many cressets, and bronze candelabra and hanging lamps are in the corner. I'd like to investigate this scene before me. Okay. Where did it look like the uh, disturbance came from? Like, where were they fleeing to? Make an insight check. Looks like they were fleeing towards the exit. Yeah, but where's the exit? The way you came in. Everybody be on your guard. They fled towards this door that we just came through. That means there's something in here chasing them out. Goulash, if you'd like to take point. Yep, there we go. Beta will follow him behind. All right, you walk into the room. Nothing appears to happen. Okay, we're two now. I'd like to investigate the room, try to find any secret openings, hidden glyphs, you know, that kind of stuff. Sure. Make an investigation check. Guidance? Beta? Well, of course. Like, you have to ask. I, I do. Like, I actually do have to ask. That's the rules. All right, so yeah, as you were looking, you do find that the back of one of the couches has a secret compartment, like a panel that can slide open. Ooh. What do they keep inside? You open it? Of course I do. All right, you open it, and out flops into your hands a book. There is no title on the cover or spine. And a small hasp has it closed, like with a lock. Identify. This is a non-magical book. I sniff the book. Make a uh, perception check. You don't smell anything that you wouldn't expect in an old, rotten dungeon. It's a little moldy smelling. I unclasp the book. It's locked. But there's a keyhole on it. How thick is the clasp? Quarter inch. What's it made out of? The looks of it, brass. If I recall, copper's pretty damn flexible, right? Yeah. I make it copper. Minor alchemy, I'm a transmutation wizard. Okay. You make it copper. And then I'd like to uh, to get it off. Sure. Make an athletics check to just pull it off. A little more carefully than that, I mean. Like, uh, if I recall, you can cut through copper, right? 
you can cut through most metals. It's just a matter of the proper tooling. I mean, it's easier with copper, yeah? Usually, yes. I will take, uh, let's see. I'll take a knife and I'll kind of use it to, you know, bend and displace the copper. Okay. Make an athletics check with advantage from using a tool. You know, there's still some force involved. This is not, this oh, is yeah, not yeah. that easy. All right, that is enough. As you kind of pry at it, eventually you hear, hear like a little popping sound as the lock more or less falls apart in front of you. Being made of copper, it's easy to bend, and once it bends a little bit, the pieces don't really fit well together, and the whole thing just comes undone. Hey, YouTube, it's the lockpicking lawyer. No. All right, you've undone the clasp. I open the book. All right, you open the book and immediately see a well-inked pornographic scene. And as you flip through the book, you realize, especially as some of the pages stick together, that this is in fact a book of smut. I prepared explicit runes this morning. Oh, it wasn't the runes that exploded on the book. Oh, I didn't say explosive, I said explicit. Ah. No, that would be funny too, though. Uh, yeah. So. Interesting. You have a book of smut. And so this was in a hidden panel on the back of a couch? Yes. In a room with there's, lots of debauchery depicted and soft stuff all over. There, there's there's no code or something in here, is there? Make an we investigation check as you closely start investigating this book of smut. Code. Ew. Fourteen? Yeah. All right, so you spend an hour carefully going through every page of this book and viewing in detail all of the images. You do not believe there's any code. It's just pornography. Make a constitution save. No. To not to vomit. It's actually worth about 10 gold. Oh, so it's high quality smut. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Would you have to clean it first, or do people pay extra for it? In that its kind current of thing? state, it would be worth 10 gold. What, what would the value be if we cleaned it? I cast Prestidigitation on it. Now, do you consider pornography filth to be removed? That depends on who's using Prestidigitation. <laughs> well, Beta just said she cast it, so now I'm asking Beta, does Beta consider pornography it filth to no be... There's no Prestidigitation, so... Oh. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just making that suggestion. I, Beta doesn't know Prestidigitation. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant you, you were casting it. No, I was asking about casting Prestidigitation on it. Wouldn't that clean it up? How much do I think this will be if I clean it with Prestidigitation? So, you'd think it would like triple its value to 30 gold if it was clean. I mean... Is it tasteful? No, it's like straight up, just like, you know, hardcore pornography in book form. All the worst parts of pornography. So, what, like, so there's the part- like, there's like some like double, like, midget on horse, you know, section in here. Oh. So we need to get Spectre for this? Yes. All right, all right. Yeah, so uh, once I've concluded that this is, in fact, completely worthless smut, I'm going to, with the power of being a wizard, transmute the paper 
into charcoal. So you burn it? Yeah, so I'm going to run a current of electricity through it until it combusts. Paper's not... Well, parchment isn't really a conductor. It smells a little bit fishy. But fireworks! Uh, I mean, with enough electricity, I'm sure I could start a fire, right? I mean, you could probably spark it between his fingers to create a little mm -hmm. fire. Couldn't you just create bonfires? Or, uh, uh... Yeah, just bonfire, burn it up? I mean, yes, but I like using electricity for it. Produce flame! Beta can just... And just burn yeah, up. No, I, can, I can firebolt it, too. But it's more fun to use shocking hands. Alright, so you're electrocuting, and it takes a while, but eventually you just start to smolder and burn. Um, under? Mm-hmm. In order, in order to use uh, Shock and Grasp on it, I, I'm just going to retract my ring finger and then zap it. That's dumb. You're dumb. <laughs> under gets what I just did to the book. That's dumb. Why would you do that? That's dumb. Don't be dumb. No, no, I just gave the book the shocker. Don't be... Oh, God. Oh, terrible. <laughs> it took them too long to figure that out. Yeah, oh, I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, I thought you were going to clean it and accidentally remove all its contents. Oh, God, it's no. dirty. No, no, no. I mean, that's absolutely something I would consider to be dirty, but yeah, yeah, no. That's something I would expect a nun to do. All right, you destroy the Book of Smut. Indeed. And then I press to digitate my hands. It's not coming Several off. times. It's not. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I was about to say, all right, break out the holy water, the hydra blood, and the fire bolts. Like, you're going to need to use a 7th level spell slot to clean your hands with that? Nah, he'll just cut them off. It, that would not be the first time one of my characters has had to amputate their own limb. I just realized, I also tend to get more body horror than most of the party. Yeah. Having to chop off my own arm, having to cure a blue rot disease. Losing all your teeth. Losing all my teeth. Yeah, damn, I really do experience more body horror than the average party member. And stop drinking glue. Mm. <laughs> Alright, well, it's getting lit. I think I gotta call it here. Have a good night. Have a good one. And then, there were three. Yeah, but it I'm is getting conscious. around that time for you guys to take a long rest. I mean, we usually go till midnight, but I, I guess I can. Well, I'm not. I'm saying your party. <laughs> I, I, I know. I'm joking. My adventuring day doesn't end until like two a.m. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's uh, let's let's bunk down and have a rest. Yes, but I can get behind that. Wait. How much time until the actual rest? One hour. I'm going to spend that hour prestidigitating all of the stuff in this room that we might end up using. Okay. Because if these pillows are nice, I think we should use these pillows, but we will not use them when they have ancient orgy juice on them. Yeah, yeah, they're a lot less crusty when you're done. Yay. Not that it matters to beta. All right, and then as the hour passes and you guys begin your long rest, that is when Azor wakes up with one hit point and a third level of exhaustion. <laughs> Go back to sleep. We're taking a long rest. Bed is on watch. Go back to sleep. Okay, so we go back to sleep. I take third watch. Okay. You guys go to sleep.
let's see here. Aha, uh -huh, some time passes. All right. And your watch concludes, and sorry, not your watch, your long rest concludes without any incidents. You guys have successfully completed a long rest. Cool. All right. And then I'm going to need constitution saving throws from all three of you. It's black mold, isn't it? Uh, oh, is it? All right, yeah, so morning has come. What did the three of you do? At the end of a long rest, Azor, uh, you lose one level of exhaustion, so you're down to two. All right. Well, folks, I propose that we continue exploring. I know, pretty crazy, right? All right, let's do it. So where do you go? What do you do? Uh, where are we? Where? Well, in the smut room. My yeah. my massive erudite wizard brain postulates that adventure could be found down that rightmost corridor to that room we haven't explored. Uh, all right. All right, so you walk into that room. This huge, echoing hall is constructed of polished black stones, which give back odd reflections um, of yourselves. The most striking features here are the symbols set into the chamber floor. To the north is a triangle of dull ecru stone, outlined with some sort of gray metal. A throbbing radiance seems to spread in dun-colored pulses that wash over the area. To the east is a great ten-foot square of translucent stone, blue at the edges and shading to a deep green at the center. Bordered by a strip of pale green, the whole gives out undulating sheets of blue-green light. To the south is a circle of translucent crystal, ringed by a silvery band. The whole sends forth slowly rising clouds of pale light that spread and disappear. And to the west, the closest symbol, is a long diamond shape with four points radiating from the sides of the lozenge. The whole is fashioned of translucent stone of malted red and amber outlined in red gold. It sends up sudden tongues of brightness, planes of pale, fiery light that vanish as quickly as they appear. All these radiations gleam from the walls and floors of the hall. And if you look upward long enough, occasional glints of light can be seen from the vaulted ceiling that peaks 60 feet or more overhead. The 30-foot wide aisle that you are approaching from appears to be the only entrance to this place.
Hmm. Well, uh, is there anything obviously dangerous? Or it looks like... Well, okay. There, there, there are things obviously dangerous in this room. Does anything look like it's going to jump out and try and stab us or something along those lines? No, the room appears to be otherwise empty. All right. Uh, can I... Wizard person, what is that portal? Would you say that's a portal? Or what is the function of this room? What type of ranger are you? Uh, I am a horizon walker. So I guess I have a little bit of knowledge about this kind of stuff, right? Or actually, no. Um, I mean, you do have do, 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 the detect portal action you could take, if you think these are portals. Uh, can I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there are definitely, definitely planar portals at those four points. Interesting. Uh, is there a way we can detect where they go? There might be. But you're not going to like it. It's by going through. Well, that would be one way to tell where it goes, yes. Let's do this. Hold up, hold up. I'm going to pull up, detect magic, and then I'll approach these planar portals. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, there's there's conjuration magic on all four points. Well, there right. are four symbols on the ground, right? There is the circle, a triangle, a square, and the lozenge. Alrighty. He's I, I would like to identify the um Let's go with a. Uh, th these were each flavored by element, right? What do you mean? You said they're symbols, right? Yeah. They're elemental themed? Yeah. Is there one for water? Yep. The square. I'll start, I'll start by identifying that one. Sure, you walk over there, you know, touch it. Identify comes back with nothing. There is no return from identify. But it's clearly magical. It is clearly, obviously magical. And it highlights it as conjuration magic under detect magic. Can I uh, look into the arcane nature of this array? Just pick my yeah. Can we get a kind of check? Can I get guidance, Beta? Yes, you may have guidance. I mean, it seems to be kind of like a planar version of like a teleportation circle or something, and that you think standing like in the middle of the symbol might very well activate it. Does it provide any information on destination? Well, you know that this symbol seems to be you know, connected to something about water, so being a planar teleportation circle, it might very well take you to the plane of elemental water. The entire thing is related to it? You're in the temple of elemental evil. There are four, pl there are four primary planes of the elements. Water is one of them. What I mean is, this entire circle is dedicated exclusively to water. It would appear that way, yes. And it's a okay. square. Oh, sorry. The square is devoted entirely to water. Okay. And it's the only square? Yes, they are all different shapes. Is there any kind of script in any of this? No, there is not. 
do those uh, four cubes that we have react to these in any way? The four cubes? The, uh, the trap, trap cubes. Styles. Ah, no, they do not. Uh, does anyone have a bucket? No. I have a lot of shit on me, but a bucket is not one of them. Wait, uh, under. Is my understanding of this that if we were to step into it, we'd be shifted over to the plane of water? You think that might very well be the case. I take a ball bearing and toss it in. Okay. It clatters when it hits and rolls out. So it doesn't activate the portal? Doesn't appear to. Well, an object doesn't activate it. So it needs to be one of us to activate it. I wouldn't know. I mean, that's I guess that's my assumption. Uh, besides the four portals, what, what else was in the room? Nothing. Okay. I'd like to investigate the rest of the room. Make an investigation check. Beta guidance? You have guidance! The polished black stone which makes up this room appears to be well made and tightly formed. There are no gaps of any kind that you are able to discover. All right. Any, any ideas, anyone? Because here we have the means of traveling to other planes. It's just not the planes we want right now. Could we mix the stones together? Like, one on top of the other to see if they like make a different destination? Mm. Uh, I'd suggest we avoid tampering with it until we explore the rest of this area. Yeah, let's come back to this in a sec. Okay. On to the next room. All uh, right. Which is... The only hallway you haven't gone down yet is to the northeast in the pillar room. All right. Uh... Let's go check it out. You first. Okay. And can I cast Pass Without Trace on us? Yes, you can. Ooh, okay. That's good. Spell. I'll do that, and we can all scout together. All right. As so you guys head down this hallway, why don't you guys make a stealth check because you're being trying to be sneaky. All of you make stealth checks. I'm oh, sorry, I forgot to add my uh, stealth bonus on. That's just plus four, so oh, well, I guess. What does yeah. uh, what does pass without trace give us? Plus it ten adds... to your stealth. Plus ten to my stealth. Okay. Yeah, so your stealth plus ten. All right. Well, two of you creep. Out, beta is loud. Yeah. Yeah. Beta makes these big stomping motions as she quote unquote sneaks. Which is. Into really... this 30 by 40 foot chamber, which is a strange composite of polished pink stone, golden chains, and a floor of loose earth. Deep black earth covering the entire floor save for a four-foot-wide walkway which edges the room. The bright metal chains hang from the wall, affixed by rings to the walkway as well. The room is dark. The walls show neither cressets nor scones. 
or sconces. They also don't show scones either, but that, that'd be more unusual to see. And you can see what appears to just be mushrooms and other fungi poking out from the uh, ground here. Uh, if there. all the imagery has been anything to go by, we should burn them. Hmm. So, what does Detect Magic tell us? You cast Detect Magic. Nothing lights up. Azor? I don't think I have any... Can I use a uh, locate creature to see if any of these mushrooms are uh, matched to the description of the like tapestries and things we've seen? So, with locate creature, you describe or name a creature that is familiar to you, and then you sense the direction to, to that creature's location as long as it's within a thousand feet of you. So you have to be much more specific right. with me. Yeah, uh, I don't think my character is familiar enough to cast that. Then. I, I guess it'll be a stretch. Well, what I mean, though, is locate creatures to locate a specific creature. It does not is not a generic creature detector. Yeah. Or I, I guess what I meant to say is, uh, can I locate the creature that has been carved everywhere on this temple? You could certainly try. Oh, yeah, still. All right. Can I try that? Yeah, you cast a spell. Does not does not detect it within a thousand feet of you. All right. Can I investigate one of the soil? Sure. What are you trying to do with the soil? What are you checking for? Anything unusual? Sure, make an investigation check then. Twenty-three. All right, yeah, you kind of stick your hands in it. It's moist, dark, lo loamy soil. It's unusual to see, it, you know, like this in a dungeon, but you know, the soil itself does not appear to be odd. Do the mushrooms in the soil appear to be odd? Um, they're giant mushrooms. The smallest of which is your size, as a gnome. And there, are, there's one that's even taller than Beta. I poke one of the small mushrooms. Okay. You walk up and poke one of the small mushrooms, releasing a cloud of spores. I need a constitution saving throw from you. Ten. You take 33 points of poison damage as you begin coughing uncontrollably. Eh. Yeah. Do you just sit there in the cloud? Uh, no, I jump back away from it. Okay, yeah, you back up. Uh, don't get near the mushrooms, guys. Really? You know, just a thought. Alright, if there is nothing else interesting in this room, uh, can we continue on? Where do you go? Is there is there a connection out? No. So another dead end room. Yes.
Is there anything else interesting in this room? Define interesting. Oh! Some, something that would catch our attention. I might have something here. I'm going to start molding earth on this uh, loose earth. I'm going to try to clear it away, sift underneath, and see what's below. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, and you're doing that throughout the entire room? Yeah. Heart in the back or something? Yeah, it looks like the ground is only about two feet deep. And you just begin shifting the dirt around. Revealing, you know, kind of wet and sodden stonework underneath it, but otherwise nothing of interest. Until you get towards the middle of the room and discover a coffin. What's detect magic telling me? Nothing. Doesn't appear to be magical. Beta, Azor, coffin. Uh, I preemptively cast a magic weapon on my short sword. And I am going to remove the soil. Actually, hmm. Actually, how much space is there between this? Actually, is the stonework around here magical? Yes, the whole dungeon is somewhat magical. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to uh, manipulate the uh, the dirt here with m move earth and push it out of the way. Okay. Who wants to check out the coffin? Uh, can I? I'll take you yeah. myself first. Wait a second. We might be able to do this safely at range, guys. Um, if you want to play it extra safe and remote. Uh, yeah. Safe is good for me. All right. Under? Yeah, I would. I would like to reach out to this or, coffin with telekinesis. Okay. I would like to lift it from the soil. Well, from the the bed that the soil was in. Okay. I'd like to, you know, turn it so that it's standing up facing us. Uh huh. And can I pop off the lid? Appears to be nailed shut. Let Beta do this. Beta will walk over and open the casket. Okay. I mean, it's soft wood. It looks like it's been in subterranean for a while. Easy to pop open. And inside, you see an eerie, scintillating light as wisps of uh, gelled amber ectoplasm undulate outward towards you. Roll initiative. Ugh. Ah, uh, this is an ability check, Azor. Don't you still have two levels of exhaustion? What do I know this? Uh, Initiative. Thank you. So you'd be at disadvantage. Let me do that again. Mm -hmm. So. Doesn't really change much in the scheme of things. All right. Well, Beta, there's this ooze coming out of the coffin towards you. Beta's going to blast it. 
So you're making a ranged attack while it's in melee with you? Um. Oh no! Wait! No! 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 Beta is going to pull out her club and smack it. Okay. Roll to hit. Wait, the holy club or the the other one? All right, Bay's gonna beat this thing to death with a sandwich. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Well, I'm gonna spend. Um, let me see. It's fully charged. It's got ten charges. I'm gonna spend. F- let me see. I'm gonna spend five of those charges to hit this thing. Just because I can. I'm gonna mark them down so that it would be. It would be 66. Okay. Twenty-six points of radiant damage. All right, that is seem that seems to be especially effective against this, and it is bloodied as a result. Beta is going to misty step away from this thing. Okay. Back to where the party is. Uh huh. I'm gonna get back there, and I'm gonna action surge and blast him. Roll to hit. Fuck. That hits. Ooh, that hits? No shit. And 36 more radiant damage. That's like guiding bolt him. Okay, the slime is utterly destroyed. You guys are out of initiative. That was fast. Well, yeah. But it does a lot of radiant damage. When you give me something undead that takes massive damage from radiant, oh, I fuck it up. And and so what did you hit there with it last? Guiding bolt. I hit it with my mace first, my club but does radiant damage, spit five charges, misty step away as a bonus action, and then guiding bolted it. As a bonus, and then action surge to guiding bolt. With an upcasted uh, guiding bolt? Yeah. Fuck. That's nice. Yeah, when something ends up being vulnerable to radiant damage, you guys got that covered. I remember vulnerability to radiant damage. Yeah, but as you walk in radiant beacon. So what do you guys do now? You can, you can see, um, you know, that there's no ooze coming out, that the inside of the coffin seems to have been lined with a gray metal. Lead. And, now that it is open, Arturus, you can sense that there is magic coming from inside of there. What kind of magic do I sense? Uh, before we go on, can I cast a uh, heal on myself? For yes. Alright. Hold on, I'm just looking up what certain things are here. Or sorry, cure wounds. It is a mixture of evocation and illusion magic. Intriguing. What is it? Are you walking over to look in the coffin? I don't walk over the coffin. The coffin comes to me. All right, you bring the coffin over. And rattling around inside of there is a single is a single rod, a wand that appears to be made out of out of clear crystal. I set the coffin down. Uh-huh. 
I reach in. Uh huh. And I identify. All right. Do you just want me to put it in here since you're just going to copy paste it? Yeah. Sorry, I only have this on a paper copy. I don't have a electronic. I'm sorry, I typed this up. I didn't expect you guys to actually find it. Really? Yeah, really. What were you expecting? Not for you to excavate the entire fucking room. <laughs> we should start an earthquaking <laughs> service. I hear landscaping is the hot business right now. Uh, honestly, Arcturus could get into that. He's got Disintegrate, so I can remove obnoxious rocks. I can mold Earth. I can transmute stuff. Ooh, yeah, I, I, I got a, a landscaping druid. business in front of me. We just need a druid for all the green stuff. Oh, like if you have a palms. druid, they can just take care of the whole thing. Yeah, but it's faster with uh, multiple... Uh, Spellcaster is doing it. True. Whoa. Hmm? Whoa. Given the speed of your usual typing, this must be extremely wordy. It is.
There you go. And I was prepping, I'm like, oh yeah, I don't need to transcribe this. There's no way they're going to find this when you guys go right for it. And I'm just going to pick that up. So yeah, yeah, it's a nice wand. A very nice wand. Alrighty, I'll pocket the wand. So. So we have, let's see, there's the tunnels down south, uh, west. There's the some like the pentagram room to the west. There's the smut room to the southeast. There's the portal room to the east, and the room we're in right now. Um, hey Beta. Beta. Yes. So you were instructed by whatever those weird lands gods are to destroy the evil here, right? Right, which I think we already did when we did the we killed the chick that was whatever the chick was. Killed, yes. That's, we that's banished, what we did. We banished the chick that was here so she's no longer causing problems in this land. Where she went and who she's causing problems with, we don't know yet. But we know she's not causing problems here. Right. Um. Hmm. I mean, maybe in nine years she might cause trouble, but not here, not now. Uh. Andre, I'd like to get Detect Magic back up. Sure. There is nothing magical. I'd like to walk out into the big room. Okay, the you throne. walk out into the big room. Oh, go into the throne, finally. <laughs> oh. Uh, let's walk past the throne and into the room with the pentagram on the ground. No. no. I know. Let's walk back up to the start of the dungeon and try to find that one collectible that we missed. Yeah, the investigate every single inch of every single room. Alright, so you walk back into the pillared room with the throne set up on a dais to the north. Yes, I'd like to get the throne within range of uh, Detect Magic. Okay, you do so. The throne is not magical. Can I investigate the throne to see if there's like a hidden passage underneath it? Sure. Make an investigation check. As you walk up to this great chair, sculpted to depict like to fungi assist. in human forms. Oh, sorry. Uh... Yeah, so with the assist, you'd have, it would have canceled out your disadvantage, so... 15. Oh, yeah. There are no secret passages. Like you lift everything up, you look under the carpet. There's, there's just nothing there. It's just a seat. Sometimes a chair is just a chair. All right. What about the patterns on the pillars around here? The, uh, the fungoid shapes and you know the revolting colors. Or sorry, did we go over this while I wasn't here? Probably. Okay. Uh. Is there anything on the wall behind the... Not uh, that you can find. Underdark? Hmm. I turn my gaze upon the big throne. Yes. How big is the throne? It's like seven feet wide. 
seven feet deep. What throne? There's just a pile of ash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You burned the chair to the ground. God, I love disintegrate. Does it reveal anything? Nope. So it was a red herring. Um, I'd like to walk over to the room with the pentagram. Uh-huh. Yeah, what was the there? statue over there? No statue, it's a chair. What kind of chair? A silver chair. With many, many gems embedded in it. Uh, hey, can you guys uh, quick save really quick? <laughs> uh, also under? Uh-huh. What chair? You're disintegrating the chair? Yes. Okay, you disintegrate the chair. Destroying a solid silver chair and 666 precious gems. Oh, don't don't try to trick me. That shit was cursed, and I know it. You know no such thing. As after all, it's just a pile of ash at the moment. Oh, I, I think Azor's quick loading. Quick load doesn't seem to work. The file's corrupted. Well, you quick load. All of a sudden, you, you notice that there was a glitch, and there are six hundred and sixty-six zugumis instead of gems. Oh no. Roll for advantage 666 times. Yeah, your character seems to be stuck. No one can move. Dang. We're going to have to re restart the campaign. And then the game stutter crashes. Anyway. Alright. So I guess other than apparently potentially destroying a huge payday. Uh huh. I mean, it looked evil. Hey, you do you. Probably was with that many gems. Although, did we sit down and count all the gems? T Tiro, it, I, like, it, it, I mean, okay. It had 666 gems. That's a bad number. So admittedly, to my mind at least, better safe than sorry, turn it to dust. I also don't like how the pentagram is the wrong way up relative to how you enter the room. Like, its, it's point is facing north instead of west. If they did it the correct way, they'd get sued by the Church of Satan. Um. Hmm. It's a uh, copyright distinct uh, pentagram. No, so, it's not a pentagram, it's a demonic seal. Did we... Did we succeed? Beta? Do, do you feel know. like your holy quest is complete? I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I believe we got the monster out of here. We, we have to get out of here. Yes. Yes. Do you want to give one last shot at the portal room? I, I can. I think I can try something with that portal. Um, if it's if it's set for water, maybe if I try using yeah. the, the other three uh, things, uh, the other two things I know, maybe that'll do something for us. See if your like transport dimension spell uh, reacts to any of the four symbols. Yeah, because I currently have the conduit of uh, earth aspect and air aspect. Um, so maybe if we use this water thing, it'll help. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah, you gotta get out of here. Alright, you guys walk back to the portal room. The 
with its polished black stone walls and floor. What exactly okay. are you doing? And, uh, Andre, you said this is a teleportation circle, right? I said it was similar to a teleportation circle. It's, it's not a teleportation circle. What? Would knowledge of the teleportation spell assist in this process in any way? No. Okay. What, what makes it different from a teleportation circle? Well, it doesn't teleport you. And it's not actually a circle, it's a square. Uh, you know, totally different. different. Okay. Uh, These two things are similar. In, How are they in similar? The sense, not it is totally similar different. in the sense that it is sigils embedded in the ground that work to make you not here anymore. Is there what a way we could you? modify them? with your shape earth or, or something like that to be something more in line with yeah, can, we re the, can we redial yeah. the code to get I, off world under do I think that's possible no you do not okay you think any attempt to alter the symbol might very well just break its link to the plane of water and then you just got some random scratchings on the stone yeah, guys, that, that might be very dumb and bad, so let's not. Of course, that's the good you know, possibility. The bad possibility is it explodes and kills all of you. Hydraulic injection. All right, guys. I mean... Let's, let's funnel in there. I'll yeah. try to do the aspects of Earth and air in conjunction with this and try to shift us. Wait, wait. Okay. Don't we need fire as well? Uh, yeah, but where are we going to get that? Is there a fire symbol in the room, too? There are four symbols in there, each one representing one of the four elements. Uh, can we investigate the, the fire symbol real quick before we try anything? The fire symbol sure. is a... Do, 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 do. Where is that? A long diamond shape with four points radiating from the side of the lozenge. The hole is fashioned of translucent stone molted red and amber, outlined in red gold and it sends up sudden tongues of brightness, planes of pale, fiery light that vanish as quickly as they appear. Um, I'll identify it? Again, identify tells you nothing. Is it magic? Yes. I attune to it. Nothing happens after spending an hour attuning to it. Is it removable from the wall? It's on the floor, and no, it's it's uh, embedded in there. Oh, okay. Um, is there any part of this process that seems like it's designed to be interchangeable or adjustable? What process are you talking about? It, okay, so as I understand, the only thing in this room is a square dialed for the elemental plane of water and that has symbols for earth, wind, fire, and water, right? And it's a square. No, there are four distinct symbols on the floor in this room. Each symbol appears to represent one of the elements and is linked to that elemental plane. So there is a link here, like this lozenge is a link to the plane of fire. The square is a link to the plane of water the circle to the plane of air, and the triangle to the plane of earth. What would happen, do you think, if we opened all of the portals at the same time? Could, if we had, say, five people, one on each portal, and to open them, would you be able to use the resulting portals to do something, or...? I mean, even if that worked, it wouldn't necessarily catapult us in the right direction. You... I feel like we need some expertise on this that we're lacking. Okay, but e each of these symbols are an actual portal. You would believe so, yes. Would Arcturus be able to spend time to try to deduce how these portals are meant to be used? Uh, 
yeah, you already did that before. You think that uh, they were intended for someone to stand in them and be teleported to a location on that plane. What do we know about these elemental planes? They're bad. The elemental plane of water is an actual straight-up ocean. Elemental plane of air is literally just an open atmosphere with no land. Yeah, and I, I think I can get earth and fire. Or actually, what's earth? I can think I can get fire. Is it just solid rock? Eh, probably with, like, caves and tunnels. Uh, wait, uh, under the, the symbol being used, is it the evil symbol or a neutral symbol? It is a neutral symbol. I propose air. Do what with air? Let's go through air? Yes. All right, and what do we hope to achieve? Mm, going home? I mean... Well, Arturis, uh, you know that you have scribings from two planes, right? Y yeah, I have scribings from Earth and air. Where do you think they came from? The, these symbols are the planes themselves. Correct. So, we'll probably be able to find the remaining symbols if I follow this logic by going to the actual planes themselves. Alright, uh, fire or water first, then. Uh, do we have fire resistance? I didn't bring water breathing either. Ugh. Let's go to fire first, I guess. Unless right. anyone has any other. Everybody gather around. Gotta add to the power. Oh, Beta? Really? Beta? Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Alright, I'm going to place my hand on the symbol of fire. Okay. You disappear. What do the rest of you do? I follow suit. You also disappear. Beta? I mean, like, I'm not going to touch the thing, because they... Yes! You guys find yourselves standing in a star-shaped room with dark gray and black walls. The natural stone floor is porous, and waves of heat and steam emit from those orifices. The room is filled with an uncomfortable heat, and small piles of glowing embers are scattered around the room, providing a dim light. There are eight sealed stone doors, each with brass hinges and fittings that provide exit. Two doors are located in the northeast, two in the southeast, two in the northwest, and finally, two in the southwest. And that is where we will call it for the evening. All right.